Last fall, Jordan Lynch in Northern Illinois enjoyed the best season in MAC history, capping off a conference crown with a trip to the Orange Bowl. That success has carried over. They've already beaten one Big Ten foe with a last second field goal in Iowa City. Today, they try and take down another. It's Purdue and head coach Daryl Hazel standing in the way. In West Lafayette, a win would be music to the ears of a homecoming crowd. Welcome to ESPN's College Football, presented by Five Hour Energy. Ross Aid Stadium here in West Lafayette, where the Boilermakers are hosting Northern Illinois. The Huskies busted the BCS last year and are looking to stay on schedule for another crack at it this year. Jordan Lynch has them off to a 3-0 start, and he's doing it with his legs. 16 games in his career with over 100 yards rushing, Joey. That's best amongst active players. Jordan Lynch is a guy that had 25 touchdowns passing last year, 19 touchdowns rushing. On track to have a better season this year than he did last. He's not the best athlete in the world, not the, not the flashiest guy you'll see, but he's a fierce competitor, maybe the best you'll see at competing. He finds a way to win. He will start out on the uh, sideline as Northern Illinois won the toss but deferred, so Purdue will be out there to start things off, and it may be a case for the Boilermakers. They're gonna have to find some offense. They floundered with the football so far this year. If they're gonna try and keep up with Jordan Lynch and the Huskies who come in averaging 40 points per game, then that'll certainly be a big story, the offense against the Northern Illinois defense that has been giving up points at an alarming rate this year as well. And the return out to the 19-yard line, that's where the Boilermakers will take over. And Welcome to West Lafayette. I'm Beth Mullins along with 16-year NFL veteran Joey Galloway. And what could be an historic day for the Mid-American Conference, Joey, never has a Mac school beaten two Big Ten opponents in the same regular season. If they're going to get that second win today, Jordan Lynch will probably be a big reason why. Absolutely. He gets after it no matter what the situation. He's a guy that knows how to win. You hear coaches say people will their team to victories. Well, that's what you say about Jordan Lynch. He will not let them lose. They've been behind in all three games, and they find a way to win. On the end around for the Boilermakers. And that's B.J. Knopf picking up 12. And how about Rob Henry, the fifth-year senior who's been on a long journey to make this short walk from sideline out to huddle. Over a thousand days, Joey, between starts from when he had the job in 2010 and regained it to start out this year. Out of Ocala, Florida. Working out of the gun, and Henry's gonna keep. And he'll pick up the first down as he rolls out across the 40-yard line following Kevin Pimphile on that left side. How about our impact players, a running back looking to get on track and a hard hitter in the secondary? Akeem Hunt is the guy you fear in this Purdue offense. If a guy that can hit a home run is Akeem Hunt. And then Jimmy Ward, the safety all Mac last season, led the team in tackles that last year and this year. He's the guy that will be in charge of stopping Akeem Hunt if he breaks through the front line. And Ward had a huge interception in the final two minutes of that Iowa game that got them the ball back and ultimately Allowed them to kick the game-winning field goal and a victory in Iowa City. And again, they'll try the end around and sweep it with the receiver. Ball pops out late, but already down. Pretty impressive and start. carry was Matt Williams. Pretty impressive start already for this Purdue offense. You know, they, they're, they, they've run this. This is a misdirection play. Receiver comes in motion, comes around, takes the handoff. And when you look at this, NIU had defenders out there, and that's just a nice play by the receiver getting those yards after first contact. Akeem Hunt, the ball carrier. Akeem Hunt, the ball carrier. So we've seen a, a couple of receivers with the ball in their hands. Raheem Mostert had that last carry. Hunt there with the ball. Joey, we also expect to see a lot of Brandon Cottom, who's a, got a fullback-type body, but they may have him in at both the fullback and tailback positions today to try and get... The ground game going went 116th in the country at just 70 rushing yards per game. Henry with the empty back four, firing across the middle and complete 
Now close to the 40-yard line and a late flag coming in from the secondary. Cameron Posey with the catch. Pierce interference. Offense, number 89. 15-yard penalty, first down. That's the senior out of Indianapolis, Patrick Beatty, whistled for the infraction. There's Daryl Hazel, his first year here at Purdue. He played Northern Illinois last year in the MAC championship game while he was at the helm of Kent State. And one of the more remarkable turnarounds that we've seen in college football. I enjoyed talking to Coach Hazel yesterday. You, he's a guy, when you sit in a room with him and listen to him talk, you can hear and see why he's successful. All right, it's time for Purdue and Henry on the rollout. Incomplete over the head of Knopf, his intended receiver. One of the things that Daryl Hazel is still searching for, Joey, some playmakers from either his backfield or his wideout. Certainly, uh, Henry gets a lot of attention for how troubling the offense has been thus far, but it's a it falls on everybody right now. And penalties kill a team that is struggling to start fast. We talked to Coach Shoup, the offensive coordinator. What is the problem? It's penalties, it's dropped balls. Now we have a second and extremely long with an offense that's struggling to find playmakers. Five wide here for Henry. Has the time going deep down the near sideline, incomplete. It was underthrown to D'Angelo Yancey. One of a handful of true freshmen that are getting some time. Yance is a young guy, and he'll learn this. As a receiver, take your time. Wait. He turned a little too early, turned his body, which alerted the defensive back that the ball was in the air. If he waits a split second more, he'll realize he'll turn that ball beyond him. It'll be a long completion as opposed to a long incompletion. Could have been headed for his back shoulder. Deshaun Durant was there to break it up. Pressure coming right up the middle. Flag down, flushed out of the pocket is Henry. As big Joe Windsor was bearing down on him. Legal formation, offense, five players in the backfield. Penalties decline, fourth down. And this was a drive that started off pretty impressive for, for Purdue. A few first downs, and then what stops it? Three first downs in that first drive, then they had a penalty long incompletion, and then another penalty on the on the third down. You will not be successful that way, and Purdue has got to fix that if they want to start having some success in the first half. I think, uh, what was it, their first two touches were for over 10 yards. And then stymied by the flags. Tommy Lee Lewis back deep to receive the Cody Webster punt, and he is telling everybody to stay away from it. Takes a couple of Purdue bounces inside the 20 to the 18, a 51-yard boot by Webster, who's on the Ray Guy watch list. And now our first look at Jordan Lynch, the fifth-year senior from Chicago, a record-breaking season last year, even better numbers through the first three games this year. Just finds way to move the chains. He, you know, he won't be a 70-yard touchdown guy, doesn't have the greatest speed in the world, doesn't have the greatest moves in the open field, but finds a way to move the change for this offense and keep him on the field. Decent arm and dangerous on the ground. He's seventh in the nation currently in rushing at 135 yards per game. They'll put Lewis in motion. And then throw the other way. The run Brown with the catch out of the 33. Run out of bounds there by Antoine Lewis, who gets the start today for the injured cornerback, Frankie Williams, who is out. The corner on the other side, Ricardo Allen, is nursing a bum ankle. So we'll see if Lynch and company try and test those guys early and often. Lynch flushed out of there. Trying to cut it back. And Lynch will go down on one knee. At about the 37-yard line. Greg Lotto was coming right up the middle at him with some help from Ryan Russell. How about Lewis and Allen in that matchup, Joey? Lewis is 5'7", 155. He's like a scatterbug receiver. You got to keep your eye on him. First, the ball hawking Ricardo Allen leads his team in the interceptions like he has in the past. Cameron Stingley, the tailback. Sterling offset and now on the move. Lynch with the spin in the backfield. Off the back foot, he's got a man downfield. Incomplete. 
at the 35 and a pass interference penalty coming up as Anthony Brown was having problems with Luke Eakes. Pass interference, defense, number nine, automatic, first down. That's the third penalty already on Purdue. And that's a wide open tight end running running to the corner. And again, Anthony Brown, the safety, not great in coverage. You can see defensive backs cannot look back for the football. So as a receiver, you slow down, they're going to run into you. You get pass interference that way. That moves the Huskies across midfield. Coming in at 3-0, and oh, they have had to come from behind in all those games. They have not been the best first quarter team. Harris Jr. down to the 40, tackled by Will Lucas. They were down 20 to nothing to an FCS team, Eastern Illinois, last Saturday and rallied to come back and win it. They've been big in the third quarter in particular. Minus 18 in the first quarter this year. Lynch with a shot across the middle off the fingertips of Duran Brown and another flag coming from the secondary. Ineligible receiver, downfield, number 77. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's the right guard, Jared Volk, who was drifting downfield. They don't call that a lot nowadays. You have so many, so many spread plays, so many misdirection plays. A lot of times, the linemen do get downfield, and you rarely see officials call it nowadays, although you do see the opposing team, the opposing offensive coordinators complaining about it, and I understand their complaint. They called one in this situation. Rod Carey, a matchup here of first-year head coaches, was the offensive coordinator last year, taking over for the late Mike Dunbar, and got the head coaching job when Dave Doran left to go to NC State. The screen here for Harris Jr. trying to wait for the block, and gets inside the 35, and he's got the first down after a 12-yard gain. And this is a nice play call. Let the defense lineman come at your quarterback. Stand back there. Look, the focal point is Lynch. With the ball in his hands, the defense is going to come to him, run a screen right behind him. Nice game. Wins for the Huskies this year over Iowa, Idaho, and Eastern Illinois. And to get to 4-0, Lynch takes a hit inside the 30 down to the 28-yard line. Tackled by Taylor Richards. An impressive drive by Northern Illinois on this first one. You know, nothing flashy. Keep the chains moving. Jordan Lynch gained five, six yards per rush, setting up a second and four. Now, this opens up the playbook. You can call a lot of things, especially if you're a playmaker. Is your quarterback like Lynch? Keep the ball in his hands and see what he can do with it. Now second and four. And Carey was trying to call a timeout. Timeout. Offense. First of the half. And he got it. We'll, we'll take the break charge. as well. Timeout. Scoreless with Northern Illinois on the move. Applebee's doesn't just give you juicy steak. They top it off with sweet honey and a kick of cracked black pepper in their signature honey pepper sauce. And they top that top off with crispy fried jalapenos and onions. And the top the top of that top off, it's on their famous two for 20 menu. Applebee's new honey pepper sirloin. See you tomorrow. have inside your phone says a lot about you. It's time the outside does too. Only AT&T lets you customize a Moto X that's designed by you. Choose colors, accents, and much more. Get it now for zero down, only at AT&T. Verizon's 4G LTE network great with our blue shirt? We asked Christina the beta test it. Verizon has the largest 4G LTE network, which means you get great coverage in more places. Usually when I'm talking on the phone, I'm also shopping, so it's nice to have the multitasking ability. The speed on this network was lightning fast. I was completely blown away. 
All right, guys, gotta get back to my run. Beta tested, blue shirt approved. Choose any carrier, any phone, any plan. Get the HTC One from Verizon, only at Best Buy. Thank you, Orville and Wilbur, Amelia, Neil and Buzz, for teaching us that you can't create the future by clinging to the past. And with that, your history. Instead of looking behind, Delta is looking beyond. 80,000 of us investing billions in everything from the best experiences below to the finest comforts above. We're not simply saluting history. We're making it. ESPN College Football is presented by the makers of Five Hour Energy. Take it after lunch, be clear and alert for hours. And in part by Audi, Truth in Engineering. Go back home and uh, part of the homecoming festivities last night. Uh, saying hello to the team. Boiler Pete was there over at Mackey Arena, which is uh, right next door to Ross Aid Stadium. Underdogs at home. And a Mac school coming in here, Northern Illinois. Winners of 24 of their last 26. They are streaking. They've won 10 straight road games. And their home winning streak is the best in FBS, 22 straight at home. And trying to get a second Big Ten win. They beat Iowa in their opener. Lynch could not connect with Luke Eakes. Bring up third down. And that's one that Lynch would love to have back. Tight end leaks out into the flat. Looks like Ricardo Allen drops the coverage. And he sort of shot puts it over his head. I mean, that, that's one that uh, you don't see Jordan Lynch miss very often. Thanks for the Boilers to get a stop here. Put some pressure on Lynch. Harris is offset in the backfield. Lynch stepping up, gonna run for it. He's got the first down yardage, sliding at the 20, but there's a flag down at the 25. Legal formation, offense, five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty, third down. So both teams getting flagged for an illegal formation on their first drives today. That'll take away the first down yardage. And I thought Northern Illinois was in an illegal formation the play before that one, that they didn't call. That one they caught them on a third down. Now it sets up a third and long. We'll see that Jordan Lynch can complete a pass down the field. Call it third and nine. John and Juwan Breskison come to the near side. Lewis is in the slot. Lynch going to try and run for it again. Wrapped up at about the 27-yard line, and that'll bring up a fourth down. Joe Gilliam got him, the junior from Indianapolis. Nice rally to the ball by Purdue defense, and Gilliam saw him last week versus Wisconsin. The tackling was terrible. Maybe the worst I've seen in a long, long time. It was really that bad. Right there, they rallied him around Lynch, brought more than one hat to the party, and brought him down short of the first down. Matthew Sims is a terrific kicker. Trying a 44-yarder here, his career long is 54. And he had the boot that beat Iowa earlier this year, and he is true to form on his first attempt. And first touch of the ball for the Huskies, and they put points on the board. 8.46 to go, homecoming weekend at West Lafayette. 3-0 Huskies. Thank you. They say no good deed goes unpunished. And some days it seems true. But we keep on doing the things that matter. Like buying new Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. From now to the end of the year, a portion of each sale benefits living beyond breast cancer to empower women affected by breast cancer. New Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. It's one good deed that will go just right.
battle's over. We got our PlayStation 4s a while ago, got here early. There were like at least a million robots. We won, by the way. That's Dave. He's a crazy man. You should have been there. Play the future first. Grab a Taco Bell five buck box, and you could win a PlayStation 4 before it's released. Where are you guys from? Oh no, here we go again. Oh dear. I need a little help here. I'm sorry, I don't have a USB port. Oh snap. You have a real keyboard too? This isn't going to end well for me, is it? Nope, definitely not ending well. Do you still think I'm pretty? Boiler Pete doing his thing on campus here at Purdue as we welcome you back to ESPN's College Football. Start of a great day for you. Coming up on the ESPN networks, number one, number three, number four, number five, number 10, all in action. It's a great day for quarterbacks, too, on ESPN2. Jordan Lynch, Jameis Winston at Florida State, Johnny Manziel, AM coming up later. Taylor Kelly and ASU in the nightcap tonight as Purdue will take a knee and start out at their own 25. How about Wisconsin and number four, Ohio State from the shoe tonight? The nation's longest winning streak will be on the line, and can Melvin Gordon bring it to an end? The top rusher in the country, and Wisconsin leading into the Buckeyes and a couple of quarterbacks, Joey. Yeah, what a terrific problem to have for Urban Meyer. Kenny Guyton on the bench, and I think I think Braxton Miller will start today, and I think he should be the starter. He's the main reason they're in the top five. Stick with the guy that brought you to. Stick with the guy that brought you to the party, and he he's the one that has done it for Ohio State. Number 23, Wisconsin. Number four, OSU. Tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, on ABC. Three nothing after the field goal for Northern Illinois, and Rod Henry, little play action. He's got all day to throw it, and a first down catch out across the 45. Akeem Hunt coming out of the backfield for a gain of 23. And this is nice protection. Henry has a chance to stand in the pocket and read this offensive play high to low. Looks downfield first, nothing there. Drop it down, find, find Akeem Hunt out the backfield. As a quarterback, to have the ability to survey the entire field and not worry about getting hit is important to get into your rhythm and helps your confidence. Good protection there by the O-line to give Henry the time. They'll send Brandon Cottom in motion and the give to Hunt across midfield. How about Kevin Panfile, the left tackle, calling out his mates. Look at this extra push. They are going the extra mile. Devin Smith, Robert Kugler, Trevor Foy, and Justin Kitchens taking it upon themselves, Joey, to help out the offense this week. Yeah, and offensive coordinator John Shoup told us they need to take runs that are three yards, turn them to five yards, maybe six yards. That's what they do in this situation. <laughs> the entire pile moving. That's offensive linemen who are playing to the echo of the whistle. Keep pushing till the play's over. He wanted them to be stickier on their blocks today. Thought that they were releasing a little too quickly and allowing guys to get through them into the backfield. They were plenty sticky on that. An extra seven yards on the push. Here's Hunt off the left side. He gets hit at the 39 after a short game. You got three new guys on that left side, and then Foy and Kitchens anchoring the right side. And there's Pam File, the fifth-year senior from Miami, who said, hey, we got to do better than 70 yards per game and called out his guys up front all week in practice to move the football against a Northern Illinois defense that has not been good at stopping the run. In fact, opponents gaining nearly 500 yards of total offense against the Huskies. We have been winning shootouts and some movement out of the backfield. Ball start. From offense, number 25. Five-yard penalty, second down. Here's why the Boilermakers were hoping that this would be exactly the shot in the arm they would need for their offense and to play a defense like NIU has had thus far. Yeah, and, and NIU is undefeated. Unbelievable numbers to be giving up 34 points a game and remain undefeated. I think it speaks to how good their offense has been, but if they want to continue to be successful, they're gonna have to have to find a way to stop some of these offenses from scoring. Purdue sets up the screen. 
He did. If it stands, it is the longest run of the season for Purdue. Or check that. That was the screen pass. Sorry. Certainly the best effort from Hunt so far this season. And this is what Hunt brings to your team. He's what he he's the big play guy. He's the home run guy. Ball in his hands, out in the field. He can make guys miss and go the distance. Junior from Covington, Georgia. You know, I never understand is as a runner, you're running down, you, you're running down the sideline. Why even be that close? I understand if you're getting around the guy, but once you're around the guy, go in. Yeah, Give yourself enough room. The ruin on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Hunt trying to pick up where Akeem Shavers and Rob Bolden did the job for the Boilermakers last year. Made it to a bowl game last season, but that was not good enough to save Danny Hope's job. In fact, they've been bowling a couple of years in a row. And one of the things that Daryl Hazel has talked about is climbing ourselves out of the middle of the Big Ten. That's his goal coming to Purdue. Changing the culture, changing the confidence of how these Boilermakers see themselves when they look in the mirror. And trying to build that confidence brick by brick. And that screen pass to Hunt will help. Absolutely, and there is no better medicine for a struggling offense than a home run hit in a keen hunt. Touchdown. Oil, our synthetics have been the driving force behind clean engine technology and unsurpassed engine protection. Because we know it doesn't matter what you do in your car, it only matters what you put in it. Make it a Pennzoil change. Nice work. Safe and sound. With all state claim free rewards, you get money off your policy every year you don't have a claim. I guess my husband Ike is pretty handy after all. Oh, here he is. Home insurance that saves you money for not having a claim? That's Allstate Home Insurance with claim-free rewards. Call 866-865-2881 or visit allstatehomeowners.com now and learn how you can save money on your policy every year you go claim-free. Call an Allstate agent now to get a quote and let the good life in. I'm the world's worst cleaning lady. I'm here in your home having a pretty spectacular Tuesday. But I don't notice the loose rug at the top of your stairs. And that's about to become an issue for me. And if you've got the wrong home insurance coverage, my medical bills could get expensive. Call today and get the right protection at a great price. Homeowners who switch to Allstate saved an average of $300 a year. Call 866-865-2881 or visit AllstateHomeowners.com and get a quote now. Well, points leader Matt Kenseth. Two for two so far in the chase for the Sprint Cup. Can he make it three in a row as they head to Dover tomorrow at 1 Eastern? Eight races to go in the chase for the Sprint Cup that Kenseth is threatening to run away with. 
Sunday at 1 on ESPN, also on the Watch ESPN app. As the Boilermaker train rolls through campus, your guy Matt Kent's at two for two, Joey. Yeah, on fire. It's been fun to watch the entire season, and now in a chase, he just can't be beat. The team hunt with the 44-yard touchdown on the screen pass to give the Boilermakers the lead, and now on the kickoff. And I nice return out across the 30, Tommy Lee Lewis. Taken down to the 36. Let's check in with Paul Carcaterra. Well, back in 2012, Jordan Lynch became the first FBS player ever to pass for 3,000 yards and rush for 1,500 in the same season. Bad news for the struggling Purdue defense. Lynch is at it again, and Purdue first-year head coach Darrell Hazel knows what it's like to face the dual-threat quarterback. Last season, his Kent State team lost to Northern Illinois in the MAC championship. Hazel told me yesterday Lynch is one of the toughest competitors he's ever seen, and Purdue must reduce his running lanes and respect his passing because of that improved quick release. Well, thank you, Paul. And look at how they're spreading out the field. Five receivers, and now he'll bring Turner in the backfield with him. The receiver screen to Lewis, juking his way out across the 40 to the 45. And an eight-yard gain for Jordan Lynch, who rushed for those 1,815 yards last year to set a new FBS record for a quarterback, breaking the record that Denard Robinson of Michigan once held. And they're completely different players. When you see Denard Robinson, quick, fast, you can see him make people miss. Jordan Lynch is a guy that does not shy away from contact, runs it between the tackles as well as the running backs. Gonna go back to the air. Stingley out to midfield, and that will move the chains first down. That record-breaking season a year ago for Jordan Lynch as his team busted into the BCS. He finished seventh in the Heisman voting. He'll get a look again this year. His numbers thus far even better than they were a year ago. Lynch, three straight passes. And again, Staley's got it inside the 30. Taylor Richards making the tackle. Check that. That's Desron Maxwell with the grab. 21-yard game. And right now, this Husky yeah. offense is rolling. They, they have the Purdue defense off balance. When they go in their play-action pass, their linebackers are stepping up, which allows the tight end to sneak in behind for, for a completion in the middle. Play action in the rollout for Lynch. Fires, and it's caught by Breskison inside the 20, close to another first down, and they will give it to him with the spot. Let's check in with Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you. 28 unbeaten teams heading into play today. Among them, number 11, Oklahoma State, on the road at West Virginia. Dave Duck, J.W. Walsh, though, kicked off here by Ishmael Banks. This one's going all the way back, and we're all tied, 7-all. This game currently airing on ESPN. Wendy, another uh, one of the unbeatens here at 3 0 for Northern Illinois. Only three 9 AQ unbeatens left. To the end zone for Brown. Touchdown. Deron Brown with the grab for a 15 yard TD. Jordan Lynch with his eighth touchdown pass of the year. A little stutter step. And you get guys. If you got a corner that has a lot of interceptions, if you give them a, a stick move, they take it. They're looking for the football. They're looking for that interception. You give them a stick move, they hesitate, and you can get behind them. Ricardo Allen does, in fact, have a bunch of interceptions. In fact, four picks that he's returned for touchdowns, but he got beat by Brown for the score. Sims trying to tack on the PAT. 10-7, Huskies. Lynch on that drive, five for five, 62 yards passing, including the strike for six. And you can see Jordan Lynch warm up on this drive. You said five for five. That one to the end zone for the touchdown.
came to Purdue because I wanted to follow my passions. And it took a lot to get me out of Texas. In the fall, I'm an offensive lineman because I love playing in the trenches. Being part of a unit, it's awesome. In the spring, I throw the shot put. I was pretty good in high school, and now I compete against the best in the country. Some people think it's all too much. I just figured, why not go for it? To be told that your work has fed millions and saved lives is very rewarding indeed. Celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed more than $3 million in scholarship funds. 10 to 7, Northern Illinois on the road with the lead right now over Purdue. There's Victor E. Husky along with Diesel. Celebrating a five-play, 63-yard scoring drive that took just over two minutes. Jordan Lynch was a perfect five-for-five five passing, including a 15-yard TD to Deron Brown. Let's check in with Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you. We check in on the state of Florida, first in Tampa, Miami, and USF. Here's Stephen Morris to Herb Waiters, 19 yards in Miami, up 14-7 on ESPNU. And then we go to Orlando, South Carolina on the road. And perhaps on the ropes, Central Florida took the opening kickoff, drove it down. Storm Johnson caps it off, and UCF leading the Gamecocks 7 0 on ABC. That is an impressive UCF team. We saw them last year, Joe, and we really liked the way they played with Storm Johnson and Blake Borges. Henry finally caught and chased out of bounds. Stephen O'Neill with the stop. Henry has to get this ball out of his hands, get it downfield. There was an out route on the sideline that came open. I think he was reading another part of the play, but if you're rolling out, the guy on the sideline should be your first read. Get the ball out, take the completion on the sideline. Earl Hazel really likes his composure and his poise for the fifth year senior. Highlight so far this year was his three touchdown passes and the loss to Notre Dame. Justin Sims, the tight end in motion. Pitch to Harris looking for a seam and taken down after a four-yard pickup. Marlon Moore, the corner, coming up. And that'll bring up the third down. Nice play by Marlon Moore. That This play looked like it was going to be a lot bigger. A few offensive linemen out front, and you see Marlon Moore just knife in and make a terrific tackle. But if he doesn't make that tackle, that may be another big running play for Purdue's offense. Sophomore out of Mobile, Alabama. Third down and five. They need the 35-yard line for the first down. No time for Henry. Now he'll step up and run for it, and he's got it. Henry out across the 40 to the 43. Tripped up by the linebacker, Jamal Bass, in a 13-yard run. And Rob Henry is a pretty good athlete. He stands in the pocket, looks around. No one to throw this ball to. Nice coverage downfield. Now make a decision. Get out of the pocket, tuck it, run, move the chains, and you can see he has some open field, some open field speed, somewhat surprising. Yeah, when he was the starter back in 2010, he was actually there not only leading passer, but leading rusher as well. The wheels haven't been the same since an ACL injury in 2011, but he can still pick and choose his moments. Three rushes for 26 yards so far today. Set it up with the play action. Back to the 30, and he'll chuck it out of bounds. And a penalty flag on the far side of the field. Legal formation. Offense. Five players in the backfield. Five yard penalty. First down. Daryl Hazel was not pleased with some communication issues that they had from sideline to field and some of the alignments in their earlier games he's not going to like the fact they've been flagged twice for that now today 
Henry, the first player in Purdue history to be the leading passer and rusher. That was back in 2010. They have such a wonderful tradition of quarterbacks here at Purdue, but it's been an inconsistent position the last six years. They've had, what, five different starters on opening day. And they'll have another new one next year because Henry will be departing. Dalen Dawkins with the carry, the true freshman from Louisville. There is the, the franchise, the guy that they think will be ready to take over. The true freshman from Terre Haute, Danny Etling, the 12th rated quarterback in the recruiting class by ESPN.com. Had a chance to watch him in warmups, throw the football, and you can see the ball comes out of his hand a little different than most quarterbacks. He can throw the football. He's wearing a red shirt at the moment. They'd like to keep it that way. Fumbling on the exchange is Henry. Northern Illinois has got it. George Rainey, the fifth year senior out of Milwaukee with the fumble recovery. And this is just a mistake by, by the offense of Purdue. They've had penalties today. Now we lay now they lay one on the ground. I mean, Coach Hazel has got to be beside himself. Because it's not like they don't have the talent. They move the chain when they don't make mistakes. These mistakes are killing them early in this game and all season long. And now you've set up Jordan Lynch with a short field from the Boilers 45. Lynch almost had a problem with the snap. The handoff inside that 45 to the 43. Let's check in with Paul Carcaterra. Well, moments ago, Greg Hudson, defensive coordinator for Boo, brought his entire defense in. He said, gentlemen, process information quicker, recognize their formations. He thought their defensive line needs to create some space for these linebackers to make some plays and own the big boys up front. Well, Paul Hudson, very familiar with Northern Illinois. He was at Florida State playing against Lynch and Company in the Orange Bowl last year. First year defensive coordinator for Hazel. Lewis down to about the 38-yard line. That'll set up a third and short. Will Lucas with the tackle. Hudson, a former linebacker at Notre Dame, played on their national championship team back with Coach Lou Holtz in 88. This is a third and short. We'll see if Coach Hudson dials up a blitz here, some way to make Jordan Lynch uncomfortable because he is on track, and you can see his confidence is growing. Play action, and he's got the first down to Eeks inside the 25 to the 23-yard line for the junior from St. Mary's, Kansas. And Luke Eeks has been open all day long. We, we saw Jordan Lynch miss him earlier. He has leaked out and somehow gotten lost on the field. The linebackers from Purdue can't locate him. When he's caught the ball, and even when he hasn't, he's been wide open. Jordan Lynch is 10 for 11 thus far throwing the ball. Ricardo Allen coming on the blitz makes the tackle. And, and there's the blitz. There's the blitz we were just talking about a second ago. Lynch is in a rhythm now. You have to do something to make him uncomfortable. Bring the blitz. Ricardo Allen gets the sack. That will take care of the first quarter as Northern Illinois tries to punch it in off of the turnover. Purdue jumped out to the early lead on the screen pass. 44 yards to Akeem Hunt, but then Lynch and company came back to Ron Brown hauling it in at a 10-7 lead. ESPN College Football Primetime, Ole Miss, Alabama, tonight at 6.30. Applebee's two for 20 menu is one app and two entrees for only 20 bucks. Only the best make their two for 20 menu, like the new honey pepper grill entrees. Let's check out the action. They're flavoring, savoring, and more flavoring. He could go all the way. He could get out of the way. Help yourself. Kick off game day in the neighborhood with Applebee's two for 20 menu. One app, two entrees, only 20 bucks. 
See you tomorrow. And see you late night for half-priced apps. When it comes to being better, what's better? Being better or worse? Better! Okay, and what are you better at? I'm better at telling jokes. Okay, let's see what you got. Knock, knock. Who's there? Queen. Queen who? Queen my dishes, please. Queen. It's queen to make it funny. He doesn't get it. It's not complicated. Better is better. And AT&T is the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. Here's Bubba Watson. The master of the escape, ladies and gentlemen. Da da da, da da da. Ooh, 375 wins the silverback. Grable storming around three defenders. Woo! The winner from Sharapova. Da da da. Da da da. Kershaw's dominating win on another all-new Sports Center next. Welcome back to College Football on ESPN, presented by Five Hour Energy. Ross Aid Stadium here in West Lafayette, a 10-7 lead for Northern Illinois, the third straight game for Purdue against a BCS Bowl team. Notre Dame, Wisconsin, and now NIU. The Clock tower here on campus. Gorgeous day. Temperatures around 80 degrees here. On a beautiful fall afternoon. Off of a turnover and a drive that started in Purdue territory and now is inside the 20 as Rob Sterling couldn't keep his feet. Stumbles out of bounds at the 19. It's been a good start for Jordan Lynch. It was uh, now 11 for 12, I believe, throwing the football. And it's thrown to wide open wide receivers again. Another guy's leaked out the backfield. He's hit seven different receivers here today, spreads the ball around, doesn't have a favorite guy, just knows how to get the ball downfield into his guy's hands. Including a touchdown to Deron Brown, who is to the boundary side, number four in white. Lewis and Breskison go to the left. Fake handoff is right as guys across the middle so far today. Luke Eeks and now Semish. Taylor Edwards with the catch. He's utilizing those tight ends. And again, Purdue brings in brings a blitz on the last play, and it works this time. Stops him for, for a fourth down. Now they bring on the kicker, and I agree with this call. You know, you're you're already winning this game. Just put more points on the board. You're going against an offense that's struggling. Go up six here is the right call. 31 yarder here for Matthew Sims. He made a 44 yarder earlier. And certainly a moral victory of sorts for the Purdue defense to hold them to three after the turnover set up Northern Illinois nicely, but the Huskies will pad that lead up 13 to seven. Every inch, every minute, every second, we chip away at advancing safety with technology like seeing every curve, even when you don't, being a second set of eyes, or having stopping power when you need it most. It's not intuition, it's intelligence. This is the new 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It is the best of what we're made of. Well-qualified lessees can lease the 2014 Grand Cherokee Laredo 4x4 for $3.59 a month. 
Are you settling for the same old, same old? Or are you making it the original with Pizza Hut's $10 Any Pizza deal? Any pizza, any size, any toppings. Delivery, dine-in, or carry-out. Just ask for or use promo code 10 any We all have a choice. Make it great. Let's go apple picking, she says. On a Sunday. Isn't this fun? Mm. Fight fear of missing out on football. Download NFL Mobile. Get coverage of every NFL game exclusively from Verizon. Monday, 3-0 meets 3-0. Only one will remain unbeaten. Buckle up. Here we go. Monday Night Football. Dolphins. Saints. 825 Eastern on ESPN. Marshall and the 3-0 Bears take on Calvin Johnson and the Lions. Russell Wilson leads the 3-0 Seahawks against the Texans. And the Eagles visit Peyton Manning and the high-flying Broncos. Cowboys at Chargers, Giants at Chiefs, Steelers at Vikings. You get every game. Call 1-800-GET-SPORTS and get NFL Sunday ticket at a historically low price. in the SEC West getting set to square off tonight in Tuscaloosa on ESPN 630 Eastern College Football Primetime presented by Hampton Hotels Ole Miss and Bama that's also available on the watch ESPN app AJ McCarron and company uh, we're gonna hold on to that number one ranking Jeff Scott one of the top rushers in the nation a lot of talk about if, uh, if, if that is the the big upset watch of the week. Some of the young guys from, from Old Miss playing well this year. Alabama has won the last nine meetings between these those two here. A couple of Kenichi brothers though playing for Ole Miss and amongst the young talent they've got there. To the studio, here's Wendy. Beth, with here with some potentially bad news for Gamecocks fans. South Carolina on the road at UCF. Keep an eye on quarterback Connor Shaw. Goes down here, fumbles the ball. He has suffered a right shoulder sprain, similar to an injury he suffered last season. He has left this game. His arm is in a sling, and he's not expected back. His team trailing UCF 7-0 on ABC. Hey, that could be huge for the 12th ranked Gamecocks down in Orlando today. And through the rest of that SEC East season. First and 10 for Purdue and quarterback Rob Henry. They are down 13 to seven. Scored on one impressive drive and then had two others foiled by penalties and a turnover. And speaking of penalties, another flag down on the play. Legal shift, offense. More than one player moving before the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. And they've had illegal shift. Wow. They've had illegal formations. I mean, they have penalties before the play starts. I mean, this isn't this isn't holding. This isn't things you're doing while things are moving so fast. At times, those penalties happen. The ones that happen when the ball's still on the ground, hasn't been snapped yet, are just unacceptable. Four penalties accepted, two others were declined, so six flags totaled already today for the Boilermakers. On the rollout, into the hands of Cotton and then out. Michael Santa Catarino with the stop. We're getting a look at uh, the big task in front of Daryl Hazel in his first year after tremendous success in quickly turning around Kent State. We asked him, will it be any different at a back school and a Big Ten school? And he said, no, we're going to stick to the formula that made us successful there. And we think it can work here in West Lafayette as well. And it's uh, sort of been a, a career track for a lot of coaches from the Mac into the Big Ten. 
including five guys currently. The pump fake from Henry and incomplete intended for D'Angelo Yancey. And this offense is built off a of misdirection, play action pass, double moves. Here's a double move uh, out and up on the sideline. But it's it's second and long, it's second and 15, so there's no reason to bite. You're only two for eight in the passing game anyhow. No reason for the corner to have to bite up. Does a nice job, stays back. But offensively, Purdue is not helping themselves by shooting themselves in the foot. And again, it's third and 15. How many plays do you have in your playbook for third and 15? We'll see one here, and actually, Henry might have to improvise in a pass that's tipped. There's George Rainey. The defensive end was coming on strong. It's a bad series. Just, just a really bad series on offense by Purdue. Penalties, incompletions, pressure on your quarterback, has to get out of the pocket here. It's, it, it's third and 15, and the quarterback doesn't have a chance to sit up. That is, that is a go back, watch the film, throw that whole series out, and let's see if we can do better next time. Cody Webster to boot it away. Tommy Lee Lewis back. A lot of respect for Webster. He's at his own 30-yard line and off the side of the foot of Webster and takes a fortuitous bounce and roll inside the 35-yard line and out at the 33, a 51-yard boot from Webster. Time now for today's Saturday menu brought to you by Applebee's. We touched on the Ole Miss-Bama game. Johnny Manziel heading into Fayetteville later today, and then the doozy in the Big Ten, the Buckeyes, and Wisconsin as Braxton Miller returns after missing a couple of games. What do you think of the defense for the Buckeyes against that run game for Wisconsin tonight? Uh, Wisconsin runs the football as well as anyone in the country, old school style, bringing a couple tight ends, bringing a fullback, hand it off to your running back, and see if you can stop our power game. Another first-year coach up there at Wisconsin is uh, Gary Anderson taking over for Brett Bielema. Jordan Lynch looking downfield and held in at the 30-yard line by Juwan Breskison, the sophomore out of Ontario, Canada. And they're going after Antoine Lewis, the corner, not used to start and has to play because Frankie Williams is out. This is, a, this is a double move, a move out to the corner and then run the post. Nice, easy toss by Jordan Lynch. Looks very comfortable in the pocket. Delivers one downfield. 41 yards on that connection. And now Lynch on the ground, trying to spin to the outside. And a short gain inside the 30. A terrific first half thus far for Jordan Lynch, who had three touchdown passes in their win against Iowa a few weeks back. 13 of 14 through the air today with a touchdown strike. Getting eight different guys involved in the pass game. A bunch of receivers on both sides of the line. And send Maxwell in motion. The pitch as they sweep it right with Cameron Stingley, the converted Henry linebacker. As the starting running back, they're hoping to have Akeem Daniels back at some point. He's out right now with a foot injury. And so they coax Stingley into doing the job. He was a former running back who had been moved to the defensive side of the ball. 244 pounds coming downhill. Can't be fun for a defensive back. There he is. Again, inside the 10. Tough to bring down. Will Lucas got him. Stanley moved in the spring. Jerry Kill moved him over to the defensive side, and he stayed there Official under time. Dave Doran. Major player. And then in the spring, he lost some weight and got himself back into running back shape. And has been doing a pretty nice job alongside Lynch in the backfield. And injured player here for Purdue is linebacker Armstead Williams. And we'll take a timeout. Making a dodge in 100 easy steps. Step one, study the competition. Step two, get angry. They're boring. Three, make a car from scratch, the dodge way. Steps four through 28, recall 100 years of know-how. Start building, try things. Yes, make it different, not that different. Bring muscle, technology muscle, efficiency muscle. Get it racing, get it in a calendar, more calendars. Huh? Polish it, punish it, and you're done. Wait, one more. Now you're done. 
Goodyear knows there are times when you need to get out at a moment's notice. When a map can't tell you where you need to go. And you need to get there on road or off. That's why everything we learn making tires for expert drivers inspires what we roll into the new Goodyear Wrangler with Kevlar. Goodyear, more driven. If they sold these pretzel dogs at the stadium, that would really class up the joint. Getting a hot dog on a premium pretzel bun with melted cheese sauce and crispy bacon, here. Yeah? Now, now, what kind of cheese you say? Melted cheese sauce, here. Yeah? Any other toppings on that one? Just that crispy bacon, here. Yeah? So you're telling me I can get a hot dog on a premium pretzel bun with melted cheese sauce and crispy bacon? Absolutely. Oh, no thanks, I already got one. The summer's biggest hit is the new premium pretzel dog. Try them with half price shakes after 8 p.m. This is how you Sonic. Hello? You watching this, dude? The Jets are rolling. What are you talking about? We don't get the Jets out here. I do. I ditch cable, got direct TV NFL Sunday ticket. You get every game, every Sunday, no matter where you live. Yeah! Wow. Nice. Yeah. It is pretty nice. <sighs> Become the world's most powerful fan. Get NFL Sunday ticket at no extra charge. Call 1 800 Direct TV. Said Williams able to uh, get up and get back over to the Purdue sideline after the injury. 13 to 7, Northern Illinois here in the second quarter. 11 18 to go. A touchdown and a couple of field goals. And Greg Hudson's defense trying to hold on right here. Jordan Lynch, 13 of 14 through the air. 162 yards thus far for the guy that finished seventh in the Heisman voting last season. Keeping it all the way inside the five, and that, depending on the spot, should move the chains, and it will. First and goal here coming up. There aren't many quarterbacks that go between the tackles like Jordan Lynch. I, I mentioned he does not shy away from contact. He runs up there like a running back. Now, he's a fit guy. 216 pounds at six foot and goes in there and he's the same size as linebackers and go right at him. Craig Hudson wanted his front four to be able to penetrate the gaps and be disruptive and so far that has not been the case. Lynch, another spin move in the backfield to the end zone, caught. And did Breskison hang on long enough? Incomplete, says the line judge Dave Chesney running on. Intended for Breskison. May have just been jarred loose by Taylor Richards there at the tail end of the play. And they'll Previous take a play is under further look. review. Rule in the field was an incomplete pass. So that'll go up to the replay official. You know, you talk about holding on to the catch through the entire play. I think that's a touchdown. Yeah, he tucks, he catches it with his hands, has time to tuck it away, and he's taking a step. Yep. Going away from the defensive back as he reaches in. I think this is going to be a touchdown. Catch, step, almost two steps with the back step, back foot coming down as well. The ruling on the field was an incomplete pass, so they will need video evidence to overturn for the Huskies to get the six here. Otherwise, second and goal from the four. And to further review, the receiver maintained possession in the end zone. Therefore, touchdown. Juwan Breskison had it long enough. Six more on the board for the Huskies. Second TD pass of this first half for Jordan Lynch. <laughs> Another impressive drive for Northern Illinois. Averaging about 40 points per game. The PAT here gets them halfway there.
still with ten and a half minutes to go in the half. 20 to 7, and Jordan Lynch has been as good as advertised, Joey. And again, receiver sitting down in the zone. Jordan Lynch delivers the ball. Touchdown. Where can a marketing administrator be a watercraft engineer? Where can a doctor serve his community while also treating patients around the world? Where can a student stay in school while expanding his education beyond the classroom? In the U.S. Army Reserve, you'll find the strength to develop new skills and gain an edge to get ahead. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. Visit GoArmy.com slash reserve. to be the official chicken of college fans. Zaxby's, indescribably good. So you can get out of your element. So you can explore a new frontier. And a different discipline. Get two times the points on travel and dining at restaurants from Chase Sapphire Preferred. So you can be inspired by great food once again. Chase Sapphire Preferred, so you can. If you had a chance to go anywhere in the world, but you had to leave right now, would you go? Oh, I can't go tonight. I can't. That's what Expedia asked me. Book the flight, but you have to go right now. <laughs> and I just go? You're this taking off. This is for real, right? This is for real? I always said one day I'd go to China. Just never thought it'd be today. We're giving away a trip every day. Download the Expedia app and your next trip could be on us. Expedia, find yours. Watch college football live all season long on Watch ESPN. Download the app or visit watchespn.com. ESPN College Football, brought to you by the Dodge Dart, Dodge New Rules, and Goodyear, chosen by experts for superior performance. Goodyear, more driven. Beautiful uh, Burke Athletic Center over across the street, connected to Mackey Arena, the Hall of Fame. And there's a familiar couple of names right there amongst the guys that are into the Purdue Hall of Fame. Tony Bukovich and the winningest coach in Purdue history, Joe Tiller, used to play basketball on grass here at Ross Aid Stadium. Matt Light also of the uh, New England Patriots into the Hall of Fame. We're going to hear from Joe Tiller. Paul Carpenter is going to talk to him in the third quarter today as Tiller is back for a halftime honor. And the return man goes down at the 15, and Akeem Hunt is immediately fouled with a penalty flag. During the return, holding on the return team, number 46. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Here's Paul Carcaterra. Thanks, Beth. Moments ago, you saw Armstead Williams, starting linebacker for Purdue, leave the game. It was a left ankle sprain. Purdue medical staff, including head trainer Doug Borsma, worked on it. He wanted to see Williams move side to side. Uh, other injury updates, too. Keem Hunt, the star running back, he was getting worked on for some cramps. It's hot down here, Beth and Joe. I know you're cool upstairs, but it's heating up on the field. Well, thank you very much, Paul. And probably hot under the collar for Daryl Hazel and the uh, offensive coaching staff. Five accepted penalties, but seven total penalty flags against the Boilermakers here in the first half. They have been their own worst enemy, and uh, Jordan Lynch has been right behind in terms of enemies. Let's check in with Wendy Nix. Beth, we turn to ESPNU where we find Miami and South Florida and another defensive touchdown here for the U. Stephen Bench sacked by Shayon Green. This recovered by Jimmy Gaines and it's 28 to 7 Miami over South Florida on ESPNU. Gaines looking uh, to stay unbeaten. They're up to 15 in this week's poll. 
could be some championship contenders coming out of the ACC this year for sure. Clemson and Florida State also off the good starts. And the Keen Park bottled up quickly. Bass and Mays, the linebackers got them. It's a huge play. I mean, huge play for this Purdue offense. Already down 13. I mean, it's early in the second quarter, and the feel that you have right now with this offense is that they cannot move the ball. They just can't get anything right. The penalties, they need this first down. They need to stay on the field. It's getting to that area that you start to wonder how long can their defense keep up if they have to keep coming on the field. One of four on third downs today, Henry. Five receivers, he'll go across the middle and a big stick from Michael Santa Katarina. But holding on is B.J. Kanoff, and he's got the first down. We call this a jerk route. This is a jerk route in the offense. Receiver comes in, has the option to go across or come back. If he could choose again, he would go the other direction. Goes right to the linebacker. Huge hit. Oh, and Santa Catarina actually may be the guy that got dinged up on that play as Kanoff stays in the game. And the entire offensive unit remains after the big third down pickup. Kanoff on the end around, and BJ looking for some room. The nice comeback at the 30. Out across the 40, and to the 48 yard line. 29 yards, and the big play from BJ Kanoff with a nice Justin Sings block to spring him. Really nice block by Sins out wide. And then watch the cut by Kanoff. Breaks back across the field, keeps his feet, makes a few guys miss. That's what you need. An offense is struggling. The big plays are the best medicine because you don't have to go on the 10 play, 11 play drives. Reel off some big plays and get to the 50. Back under center now for Henry. And it'll give us to Hunt. And he's got some space. Fights off one would be tackle to the 45 and a seven yard pickup for the junior out of Covington, Georgia. You wonder if the big play by Kanoff will, will spark something in this offense. And then a nice play by Akeem Hunt. Again, open field making guys miss. Except sets up a second and short. If they can keep this drive going, maybe it'll carry over and give the offense some confidence. Over 100 yards rushing already for Purdue. They'll tack on a couple more there, and uh, looks like first down yardage. Moving the chains, and again, this drive looks similar to the first drive they had. They moved the chains, and then they killed themselves with penalties. This one's looking similar. Moving the chains again, staying on the field, keeping Jordan Lynch yeah. on the sideline, sent up a third and short. Well, the spot looked to be first down yardage. They don't even bring out the chains to take a closer look, and Henry will pick up a couple of yards needed, and now they'll move them first and 10, under seven minutes to go in the half. So a couple of third down conversions on this drive for Henry. This offense has gotten over the hurdle of not being able to move the ball, coming off the field early. Now they're getting a couple first downs. Get over the second hurdle and try to put some points on the board. Santa Catarina, the linebacker, has returned to the game for the Huskies. Dalen Dawkins deep in the eye. A true freshman out of Louisville. They'll use him in play action, and now he's trying to leak out for the catch. And that was sniffed out by Jamal Bass, who was tracking him the entire way. Interesting play. Henry is rolling out to his right, but both receivers are going across the field away from Henry. Not quite sure if that's a mistake or if that's the plate design, but he did have a running back leaking down the sideline. Just didn't have a chance to look, look at him and get it down there. Just three of 11 passing so far for Henry. Ottoman Dawkins in the backfield. And off in motion and the cutback by Dawkins inside the 35 to the 33. Dawkins, another quick running back, sort of like a Keem Hunt, 5'9, 175. You know, a scat back kind of guy, good in open field. You see him hit the hole quickly and then try to get wide. That's what smaller guys do. This one sets up a third and three, and again, big play. They're on the fringe, need a first down. 
try to get points on the board. Got to get a little closer. Couple of tight ends with Hunt, the single setback. Time out. Purdue. And First Darryl Hazel wants to be a full talk about this one. Third and two, Purdue, when we come back to West Lafayette. Applebee's two for 20 menu now features the new honey pepper grill. He could go all the way. He could get out of the way. My bad. Kick off game day in the neighborhood with one app, two entrees for only 20 bucks. See you tomorrow. Every inch, every minute, every second, we chip away at redefining capability for whatever days may come, like beach days, rainy days, even vacation days. Made with pride, crafted with passion. This is the new 2014 Jeep Grand Cherokee. It is the best of what we're made of. Well-qualified lessees can lease the 2014 Grand Cherokee Laredo 4x4 for $3.59 a month. When it comes to being better, what's better? Being better or worse? Better! Okay, and what are you better at? I'm better at telling jokes. Okay, let's see what you got. Knock, knock. Who's there? Queen. Queen who? Queen my dishes, please. Queen. It's queen to make it funny. He doesn't get it. It's not complicated. Better is better. And AT&T is the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. So who's more refreshing? The world's most refreshing can or Ice Cube? Make this quick, I'm claustrophobic. They both have a two-stage cold activation and a frost brew liner. But how do they vent? How much more of this can I gotta take, man? Double dip. Impressive. A single vent. Amazing. The double vent for a smoother, more refreshing flow. Ice Cube is cold, but Coors Light is the ultimate in cold refreshment. Let me up out of here. Crack the door. The world's most refreshing can only from Coors Light. Better? Well, it just got better. Try Papa John's Buffalo Chicken Pizza with all white chicken and crispy bacon. Get a large for just $10 or choose any large pizza, even specialties, just $11. Order online at papajohns.com. Back here at Purdue University. Yeah, the Boilermakers on the move. They're trailing, though, 20-7. to Northern Illinois has had the ball four times, and they have scored every time they've had it. And Daryl Hazel and those guys trying to get into the end zone. It has not been a frequent occurrence this year for this offense. And now on third down, on the interception. Second turnover of the day. And Deshaun Durant not done yet. Hunt able to trip him up at the 30-yard line. Off the ricochet. Deshaun Durant, who had the huge pick late in the Iowa win, Gets another one off of a Big Ten foe. And that's a tip drill. Offensively, you know, if you tip this ball, chances are the defense is going to intercept it. Nice play there by Durant. Even better return, making a few guys miss in the open field. You don't expect that from, from corners, from safeties especially. That's why they play defense. Not very good with the ball in their hands, but Durant, nice return here already puts this Northern Illinois offense in red zone. And I mean, they've been, they've been extremely good from wherever today, but short field for Jordan Lynch has, has, is very easy. About 50 yards after the catch, and now Lynch going for the jugular, and it's tipped away at the last moment by uh, Normando Harris as he was looking for Deron Brown. Lynch had a little pressure in his face, didn't have a chance to step up and deliver this ball downfield. Does get out of his hand, but that's why it was behind him short. Boy, that just sums up Purdue's offense in a nutshell. Uh, they were moving the ball up the field. They have struggled to put the ball in the end zone. And the story today has been the Boilermakers hurting themselves and Jordan Lynch helping himself to just about anything he wants. 14 for 16. That was just the second incompletion of the day. A couple in a row. Will! Will! Drop it! That's why Purdue so desperate to find that end zone. Just seven offensive touchdowns this season, including the one earlier today. You got to go back to 1993 to find struggles like that. Third and 
10. Trips left for Lynch. Brown isolated to the near side. Lynch looking for Brown, who makes the catch at the 17-yard line. And has the first down. His third catch of the day. One a big first down, the other a touchdown. It's a nice throw by Lynch. Very comfortable in the pocket. 30-10. You cannot, look, you gotta do one or the other. You cannot let Jordan Lynch stand in the pocket and play soft coverage. Those two things do not go together, or he will pick you apart like he's doing. Keeps the drive alive now into the red zone. Lynch, the crossing route, touchdown! Second time today for Duran Brown. Five possessions, five scores for the Huskies. Age Stadium right now as the Huskies try and become the first Mac school ever to beat two Big Ten schools in the regular season. A last second field goal to beat Iowa and cruising right now in the first half against Purdue. Deron Brown runs a slant. Jordan Lynch delivers a strike. Easy touchdown steps into the end zone to go up by 20. Northern Illinois University. Grit. Determination. Tenacity. We are Huskies. Champions. In the classroom, in competition, in life. We are Northern Illinois University. Learning today. Leading tomorrow. NIU. A drive that lasted all of 38 seconds using the Deshaun Durant interception and the pick return of 50 yards to springboard Jordan Lynch. They converted a big third and 10 to keep the drive alive, leading to the 17-yard touchdown pass, the second for Jordan Lynch in this first half. He has been near perfect through the air and they are trying to add another Mac win against the Big Ten to this list. Some of the notable ones just in the last five years, including Ohio beating Penn State last year on opening day. And Jordan Lynch and the Huskies, the first Mac school to play in a BCS Bowl last year. They've won the last two Mac titles. Trying to bust the BCS yet again. After today, it will be all league games on the remainder of their schedule. Two of the toughest, uh, perhaps, Ball State and Toledo back to back in November. Henry, deep down the middle. And the hookup inside the 30 to D'Angelo Yancey, a true freshman from Atlanta. One of the true freshmen that they're excited about runs the post route off of the play action. Defensive backs freeze, take a look into the backfield, and Henry delivers a strike downfield. That's the kind of play they need. That's one play, get you down near the red zone. It shortens the drive. Less chances for mistakes, less chances for penalties. 50 yards on that pass from Henry to Yancey. to give to Akeem Hunt that's inside the 25. When we talked to defensive coordinator Jay Neiman, what was he talking about, Joey, with his defense? No peeking. And they got caught peeking into the backfield on the play action. Yeah, they all peeked. Every defender, every defensive back <laughs> peeked that time and let Yancey get behind them. Not sure why, because Purdue has not had great success running the ball, but they were peeking and got caught. Neiman, uh, a holdover from the previous regime, his third year at NIU, as Rod Carey stayed at home in his first year now replacing Dave Bourne. Yancey, 
He got lost in the flow there and was open at the 16 yard line. And that's a first down, Boilers. Penalties wiped out a drive and two others stymied by turnovers for the Boilermakers today. A 44 yard touchdown pass from Henry to Hunt back in the first quarter. Got their seven on the board. Of peaking, he was looking yeah. upfield at Santa Catarina. Yeah, another drop ball, another mistake. Uh, those are drive killers. Now you're in second and long with an offense that has been struggling. You know, when you can't move the ball, you haven't been able to put points on the board. I mean, those drops really will kill you because they hurt your confidence. Well, without two of their top targets, Gabe Holmes, their tight end, is out for the season with an injury, and so is Danny. Monarosa injured right now with a collarbone. They hope that he might be back by the middle of October. A promising youngster. Hunt. Followed up at the 15. A short gain. That's going to set up third and long. Boomer Mays was there. Along with Stefan O'Neill. Just don't want to make any mistakes in this situation because even a field goal at this at this time, at this point in the game, will help your offense. I mean, it's almost running down at the end of the first half. You need something positive, something to make yourself feel better when you go into the locker room and make your adjustments. Don't make a mistake here that will take the potential for points off the board. Third and nine. They need the five-yard line for a first down. Time out. Purdue. Purdue. Second and a half. 30 seconds. 235 to go. The Boilers trying to get some points up. I came to Purdue because I wanted to follow my passions. And it took a lot to get me out of Texas. In the fall, I'm an offensive lineman because I love playing in the trenches. Being part of a unit, it's awesome. In the spring, I throw the shot put. I was pretty good in high school, and now I compete against the best in the country. Some people think it's all too much. I just figured, why not go for it? John Shoup, the offensive coordinator and uh, the quarterback's coach. Uh, guy that you spent some time with down at Tampa Bay, right, Joe? Yes, he was, he was with us in Tampa when I was there. And you could see the plays developing. They've got to get to a point where they can execute, and that's their problem. Both of their turnovers have been on third downs today. Yeah. Conversion needed right here. Henry throwing for the end zone, up for grabs, and picked off. As Henry just launched that, and Deshaun Durant got his second takeaway of the day. And you mentioned all the, both their turnovers came on third down, and here we go again. A third down, just discussed, you don't want to take a chance when you've struggled all day and you have a chance to put points on the board, this is just a terrible decision. Number one, you'd never ever throw back across your body late. All, all offensive coordinators, all quarterback coaches will tell you that it's a no-no, and it ends up like this. Henry has to be more decisive. He stands in the pocket, looks around. You don't tuck it and run. Tuck it, take off. You're a pretty good athlete. Run the football. Have a chance to score. Give your team a chance. Heck of a day for Deshaun Duran. He'd like to play Big Ten schools all the time. Lynch, can they stop him? Five for five on their possessions so far in the first half, and a penalty flag. Sideline interference on the defensive coaching staff. Five-yard penalty, first down. Wow, that's on the Purdue coaches, and oh boy, look at this on the sideline. Danny Etling, the freshman from Terre Haute who had the red shirt on to this point, is now up and warming on the sideline for Purdue. Let's check in right now with Wendy Nix. 
But thank you. Coming up on the Dave and Buster's halftime report, we'll have an update on South Carolina quarterback Connor Shaw, who's injured his right shoulder, a check on LSU and Georgia, and highlights from the top 25 teams already in action this afternoon. I'm joined by Todd McShay and Robert Smith coming up at the half. Looking forward to that, Wendy, in uh, under two minutes time now. Knocked out of bounds is Lewis on the far side. But he has the first down yardage. Well, it's been a, a rough day for Rob Henry in that last interception. Certainly did not help pick twice. He's fumbled once on, a, on an exchange with his center. Just 5 of 16 throwing. And the breaking news for Boilermaker fans is Danny Edlin warming up. The big time quarterback prospect. The true freshman from Terre Haute. Daryl Hazel's first job when he took the job was to go visit Danny Etling and his family who had already committed to Danny Hope and make sure that the 12th rated quarterback by ESPN.com was going to still be coming to West Lafayette. And they think Etling's gonna be a good one. And I saw him in warm up, saw him move around, saw him throw the ball, throws a really nice ball, ball jumps out of his hands. I'm not sure I would bring my prize possession <laughs> my golden goose into this game in this situation. There's a minute 37 left in the first half. If I'm gonna bring him in, I'm gonna wait to the third quarter. I'm gonna have a chance to talk about it. You always talk about, Joey, you know when a guy's not coming back when he they take his helmet away. What about a guy when he puts the headset on? That's that's normal. He has to talk to the offensive coordinator after every play. So quarterbacks If will he's go coming in, right? Either way, either okay. way, a lot of quarterbacks will listen to the coaching points that are going on. I've had a young quarterback. I would want him to hear everything I told my starter so he knows what I'm thinking and he's prepared as if he was playing. The injured Boilermaker is uh, Greg Lotta, who is now walking off with 1.37 to go in the first half. Finding some consistency at the quarterback position has been an issue here at Purdue in recent years. How about those guys? Starters in week one over the last six years, only Robert Marv has been the multiple opening day starter at QB. Last year, they rotated three different guys, and Henry sometimes played wide receiver. Lynch directing traffic, dropped out near midfield by Deron Brown. And Lynch makes a decision here, the same decision that Rob Henry had, Lynch had the same one. There was a guy open, but it was back across his body. He decides not to throw the ball, keeps it to the sideline. That's what quarterbacks are taught. You can tell Lynch is a student of the game. He plays this game as if he understands what's going on. Turn it down, throw it to the sideline, throw it to incompletion, come back and fight for a third and five, but just don't make the mistake. Third and six right here, Lynch will keep, spins away from a blocker. Needed to get out across the 40 and doesn't make it. Will Lucas, the first guy to get him. Purdue has one timeout left. Yeah, interesting they're not calling it. I, I, would, I would call a timeout here, try to keep some time on the clock, give my offense a chance when we get this ball back. Apparently they're going to wait and save it if they have a possession here with good field position. But they're also we're also looking at the possibility that it's going to be Danny Etling coming in at quarterback. Northern Illinois calling the timeout there so they would not get the uh, delay of game penalty so a fourth and two and a punt coming up with 44 seconds to go in the first half and the first time that the punting unit for the Huskies will be coming out Beth Mullins along with Joey Galloway this afternoon in West yet Northern Illinois trying to become the first Mac school to ever beat two Big Ten opponents in the same regular season They've been almost perfect offensively. This will be the first time they've had to boot it away. Yeah, the punter hadn't gotten much work today. This Purdue defense has struggled in stopping Jordan Lynch. He's on track. 
he's been what we expected to see. He's calm, he's comfortable, he's delivering the ball downfield and completing and moving the chains. Off, returning, gets a couple of yards across the 30, and are we witnessing the debut of the true freshman Danny Etling, who has been warming up on the sideline. A penalty flag is down oh, on the field. They added on to the end of the return. First down. They'll add the yardage on for Purdue. 6-2, 2-18. The true freshman from Terre Haute, who offensive coordinator John Shoup told us yesterday he's an uncommon young man and an uncommon quarterback. And the Purdue fans applauding the future arriving a bit earlier than expected. Out there for his first play in what they hope will be a spectacular Purdue career. And Etling will work out of the gun. They'll dial up a pass for him on the crossing out underneath and the ball jarred loose, but the play had been whistled dead after the completion to Cameron Posey. How about the crowd? I mean, the crowd, you would have thought it was an NIU crowd in here about five minutes ago. And all of a sudden, bringing Etling and they're in it. Whole new energy right now in Ross Allen, and he rifles one to the 30-yard line, and another first down. And you see a little bit of the vapor trail. They told us he could sling it, and he does. Timeout called by Purdue. Well, now you wonder if the coaching staff is thinking, man, we should have used that before the punt and saved ourselves about 20, 25 seconds. He has an interesting call not to burn the timeout. You know, some guys want to keep one, but in this situation, you only have seven seconds left now in the half, you might be able to get a throw to the sideline and save some seconds, try to get a field goal out of this, but you would love to have those seconds back you let burn off at the end of the series for NIU. That is the final timeout for Purdue, one left for Northern Illinois. Oh, we're going to field goal already. And they will bring Paul Griggs on to attempt a 47-yard field goal. That would match his season long. He's four for seven on the year. Danny Etling, two plays, two throws. Gets him into range, and now Northern time Illinois out. will Northern Illinois. go to the That's ice pack charge. here on time the kicker. The 30 seconds, time out. Well, we were talking yesterday. Do you go to Etling? Do you not? What's the kind of situation? Are you worried about getting him injured, or is it more important to get him some experience so that next year he's really ready to go? And there is the remainder of the Boilers' schedule. They've got two bye weeks in October. Yeah, you bring in Etling in this situation, and then he's going to face Nebraska next, Michigan State, and Ohio State. Young quarterback, like I said, he's the golden goose right now. He's the guy they look to through the, for the future. Not sure I'll bring him in in this situation. Forty-seven yard attempt from Griggs. Well, Etling moves the ball and Griggs gets three points on the board with three seconds left in the half. Etling comes in this situation. I would have waited till after halftime with that, you know, just 30 seconds on the clock, but Etling comes in, completes two, gets points on the board. So it worked out. Danny Entling and a smile on the sideline. How about that guy that's shaking his hand, Danny Monoroso? That's one of the young receivers that yep. they're excited to have back. A tremendous athlete, played basketball in high school, a couple weeks away from getting back, he will add a spark to this Purdue offense and a big target downfield, an athletic guy for Edling to throw the ball to. Len Dawson, Bob Greasy, Gary Danielson, Drew Brees, Herman, Orton, Everett. They've had some awfully good quarterbacks here over the years for Purdue. They hope Danny Etling is the next. 
couple of pass completions and probably more to come in the second half. The future for Purdue. The present right now, though, for Northern Illinois, Jordan Lynch. And he has the Huskies to the 27-10 halftime lead. Paul carcaterra has got Daryl Hazel. Coach, what it went into your decision to play Danny Etlin and take the red shirt off the freshman quarterback? Well, we took uh, two uh, interceptions down there on the plus side in the 50. We can't throw the ball away uh, to the other football team. We got to do a better job with our penalty situations. We got way too many penalties, but uh, I like our chances. When he was warming up, I saw you went over to him and talked to him. What'd you say to him? I said, you don't have to do anything special. Just play within the offense, and it'll take care of itself. Defensively, how do you stop Jordan Lynch in this uh, Northern Illinois offense? We got to keep him boxed in, and we got to tackle him. He's doing a nice job with the play action passes. We got to have better eye discipline in the back end. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Paul. So, Purdue, uh, Daryl Hazel, he likes his chances. He's gone to Danny Etling at quarterback. But it's still Jordan Lynch and Northern Illinois with a 27-10 lead. Now let's get you back to the studio. Wendy Nix, Todd McShay, and Robert Smith, the Dave and Buster's halftime report. Beth, thank you. Robert Smith, Todd McShay. I'm Wendy Nix here in our ESPN College Football Studios. 28 teams enter today unbeaten. We start with a look at those who are undefeated on the young season so far. South Carolina, not among them, but they're on the road at Central Florida, who has yet to lose the game. Steve Spurrier and the Gamecocks here. Third and 10 for the Golden Knights. Blake Bortles finds Storm Johnson. Huge third down conversion here for the Knights. They literally took the opening drive down the field. It set up a one yard touchdown run by Johnson to make it seven nothing. But keep an eye here on quarterback Connor Shaw left this game with a right shoulder sprain. You know, really difficult to tell what happened on the play. I think it was just kind of an awkward tackle. As you can see, they took him to the locker room right away. Some sort of shoulder injury. He had it iced up in a sling on the sideline. Definitely not coming back into this one. South Carolina now in danger of being shut out for at the end of the first half this game on ABC. His replacement, Dylan Thompson, made two starts last season, won them both, and it would appear Thompson will have to take them the rest of the way. Certainly today, if not farther, Connor Shaw, we did see on the sidelines, his arm in a sling, so not expected to return. What does this mean for South Carolina? Well, South Carolina loses its leader. You know, both of these quarterbacks have played, but Connor Shaw, when you visit with this team and you're around this team, you see that everyone kind of looks up to him. Jadavian Clowney gets all the headlines. Shaw is, is the leader, and he's the tough guy in the offense. He's a scrapper. He doesn't have the greatest arm, and he's not the, the best passer. Dylan Thompson is an upgrade in terms of passing ability, but what Shaw brings is the experience. He brings mobility. And he's 19 and 4 as a starter. So while Thompson can come in and win, he's proven that he's 2 and 0 as a starter. I still think that this is a big loss for South Carolina, depending on how long he's out. And today, right now, they're getting outplayed at the quarterback position significantly. I've been so impressed with Blake uh, Blake Bortles and the way he's commanded the offense for UCF. Yeah, and you're right about Connor Shaw, his mobility, his, his ability to make things happen outside of the pocket when things go wrong. And, of course, they came into the day without Shaq rolling their most dangerous wide receiver. So the entire offense has been in a mess. And you compound all of that with what you're having on the defensive side of the ball. And you talk about Jadavian Clowney. We saw earlier in the year we were seeing some effort-type problems. I think he just gets so wound up, he gets himself out of position. It doesn't do you any good to be so far upfield sometimes you could see right there do, do, do a pretty good job on him even when he gets free though he has not always been making the plays once again he gets so wound up he sometimes run past plays you can see right here going right past Storm Johnson you can't just play upfield every play and try and get sacks you have to stay within the structure of the defense and understand that you have gap responsibility not just a responsibility to make big plays and to try and get sacks. it's interesting too because they struggled so much early in the first couple of games that they've allowed him to kind of freelance a little bit more and so while he's being more disruptive you're seeing in all those clips that you pulled right there that sometimes he's not able to finish or you're losing gap responsibility so they've struggled as a team to try to figure out how to best utilize Clowney and and what's best for this defense as a whole and I don't want to say that Clowney's the only thing wrong with the defense they're having oh, big no. time trouble well, with that's coverage. you can share the wealth tackling when it comes to that. oh it's been terrible uh, we'll likely know more about Connor Shaw as the day progresses either way Way. South Carolina has North Carolina next week, then they're at Georgia. Oklahoma State also among the unbeaten. Facing West Virginia, first quarter, no score. J.W. Walsh 
hits Josh Stewart. He'll take it all the way for 73 yards and a score. It's good to be a quarterback in one of these offenses. <laughs> and you throw three, four yards, you get a 73-yard touchdown. Had those stats later in the first quarter, same score. Uh, this, though, when things do not go as planned, Walsh picked off here by Ishmael Banks. This is, this is a throw you cannot make as a quarterback. And Walsh should know this in his game against West Virginia that has struggled on both sides of the ball, had not been putting up points, hadn't scored an offensive touchdown in nine quarters. You can't allow this team to get going and for the crowd to get into it. That They lost all momentum on that one throw. Poor decision, poor throw, almost a pick six. Third down here for the 17 for the Mountaineers. Clint Trickett hits Kevin White. West Virginia leading four. 14-7, but this just happens. Charles Sims on the carry, a one-yard plunge, 24-14 West Virginia. Uh, this is big for West Virginia, having a lot of trouble scoring points coming to this one. Clint Trickett comes in, the transfer from Florida State, really getting that offense spark. Perfect weather for football here. Miami, South Florida, first quarter tied at seven. Stephen Morris finds Herb Waiters, Waters, Miami leading 14-7. Well, Stephen Morris, I know you really like him, Todd. Such a quick release. Had some drops in that in that receiving core, but man, he's uh, very That's impressive. A big time throw there with pressure in his face. Coach came up and gave him a chest bump around midfield <laughs> after that throw. But here Morris hit as he throws the pass incomplete. But Morris does leave the game after that play. He has yet to return. Hmm. Number 15, Miami, 35-7 over South Florida at the half. Number one, Alabama in action. So too is LSU and Georgia. Our Saturday set up talks about what we're watching next. Falls around the corner. And so is your Husqvarna dealer. Husqvarna is known for high performing, durable and innovative products. So is it any wonder why your Husqvarna dealer is the best in the business at what they do? Providing products, maintenance, parts, and accessories whenever and wherever you need them. With a nationwide network of dealers, you don't have to go far. Visit a Husqvarna dealer near you. You can find your Husqvarna dealer at Husqvarna.com. The world is facing a major crisis. Girls are getting hot, causing guys to lose their cool. That's why the people at Axe have developed Axe Black Chill. Keep your cool with the new Axe Black Chill Antiperspirant. I'm your son. And as you well know, I can barely focus on one thing at a time. So between mowing the lawn and football, I choose football. Sorry, Robert. Five dollars doesn't buy my undivided attention. And if you've got cut rate insurance, you might end up with a financial buzz cut. So get all state. You can save money and be better protected from mayhem like me. Mayhem is everywhere. So get an Allstate agent. Are you in good hands? Hello! It's water. I filled it up at the gym. Great tasting tap water can now come from any faucet anywhere. Introducing the Brita bottle with a filter in. Want a ripped upper body? The new Rip Deck from Perfect Fitness. It combines two planes of motion for a compound movement that gets maximum results. The Rip Deck rotates to engage more muscle in your arms and chest. Plus, it adds lateral motion. To rip muscle fiber. There's nothing else like it. You get nine supercharged exercises in one machine. Guaranteed to build monster muscle for your arms and chest. Narrow, medium, and wide push-up position. A padded base for knuckle up and chest busting. Forearm flies and the killer move the body chiseling, rotating push up, and pec fly combo. Then destroy your ass, separate the base, do mountain climbers and atomics. It's a complete upper body workout system guaranteed to shred. Boom goes your arm, boom goes your chest, boom goes your abs. The Rip Deck was invented by a Navy SEAL, is made with steel ball bearings, and fits under your bed. So here's the deal. The Rip Deck is only two payments of $29.95. It's chump change for this kind of workout. Call or go to PerfectRipDeck.com right now. Get ripped with the Perfect Fitness Rip Deck. This halftime report is presented by Dave & Buster's. Eat, drink, play, watch sports. I'll pick Georgia. Huh? Uh-huh. Okay. I won't pick them. <laughs> oh, the tag game. Oh, the tag game. I love it. The crowd 
field bubs that the reason Corso's picked Georgia four times and the Bulldogs have lost all four. <laughs> Don't do me any favors, Lee Corso. They say in Athens, here's our Saturday setup, and we start with LSU and Georgia. And I'll tell you, this LSU team has some very dangerous weapons on the outside. You can see Odell Beckham Jr. there. You see Jarvis Landry right here. Zach Mettenberger has improved. He's certainly got the players to get it done. Oklahoma on the road at number 22, Notre Dame. And Tommy Reese, the Notre Dame quarterback, averaging more than 39 pass attempts so far this season. You got to think they want a little bit more balance on the offensive side. Oklahoma defensively playing very well. This is going to be a bigger test. Also, your guy, the bell dozer, the bell throws, or whatever you want to call whatever it. Whatever it is. This Oklahoma week. trying to throw the football with Bella quarterback. At 6:30 on ESPN, Ole Miss at number one, Alabama. And Alabama, yes, they still can play some defense. I think it's going to be important today that they slow down this run of Ole Miss. Remember last year, held them to 218 yards total. Here with us on ESPN2 at 7 o'clock, Texas A&M at Arkansas, Todd. Yeah, and last year, this was a beatdown, 58-10. to 10. Johnny Manziel's looking to get a repeat, but Arkansas a little bit under the radar. Some people think that this, this one could be a little bit closer than the experts think. It's my upset special, Wisconsin at number four, Ohio State, 8 o'clock ABC. Upset special. You see Braxton Miller there. The he is back. Going to be playing this one. Maybe some of Kenny Guyton as well, but this man right here, Melvin Gordon, the human first down, averaging 11.8 yards a carry this year. Got to do a good job of shutting him down. Let's go back to LSU in Georgia, a quarterback who began his career in Athens, Zach Mettenberger, but he's really shown a lot of improvement, Todd, so far. He's come into his own with Cam Cameron coming in as the first-year offensive coordinator. They're not spreading things out and running up-tempo, but they're taking some more shots off of play action and allowing him to take advantage of that big-time arm. I think he's been more decisive. And with good pass protection, he's been very accurate throwing the football. You see here, working the play action on the inside, the room that he has to step up, step into his throws, the timing's there, anticipates it, and drills a strike. He has one of the strongest arms in college football. Now, when you look late in the first half, though, studying this tape, Auburn decided we better get after him. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Saw shades of the old Mettenberger. Then first play of the second half, they drop him back to pass, send six after him. He feels the pressure, even though there's room to step up and to look across the field. So I think the biggest key in this game, Robert, is does Georgia show the ability to get pressure on Mettenberg? And Georgia defensively, they've been having some problems. It's a young defense. You can see here in the run game, primary run support, secondary run support, both of these guys taking bad angles. Then, of course, just getting outrun on the outside. But to watch here, Brendan Langley, the true freshman, trying to think about too many things. Looking to the inside receiver, he's got a guy over him in this quarter's coverage. He has deep responsibility. First things first, do not get beat deep. Jarvis Landry, the guy they're going to try to use to go after him. That's a, that's a good call watching that tape. He's, he's a target as they say. Here's a look at the rest of our schedule on ESPN2 at 3.30 Eastern. You'll see either Iowa and Minnesota or, by the way, that's a bronze pig statue they're playing for, or Florida State at BC. Then it's 7 o'clock Eastern. It's Johnny Manziel and the number 10 ranked Aggies. They go to Fayetteville to take on the Razorbacks and in the nightcap, a Pac-12 battle between USC and Arizona State at 10.30. Ditch the average game day. Hit the new DNB Sports Bar at Dave and Buster's, where you can watch the games and play the games. Fuel the fun with game day specials like five dollar appetizers. Watch the games, play the games. The new DNB Sports Bar, only at your local Dave and Buster's. Let's do a warm welcome. Let's do crisp on the outside, cozy on the inside, and let's not do any of this. Let's go to school. Let's go to save. And then, let's go to town. So then we can go do absolutely nothing. Let's do this. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Owens Corning Attic Insulation, now 1187 a roll. What does a man who spent the last 16 years of his life wearing a helmet know about great hair? I think the answer to that question is clear.
Clear Mint with mint, ginseng, and tea tree feeds the scalp for great flake-free hair. For three years in a row, J.D. Power & Associates has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. Because amazing client service is what we live for. Quicken Loans, for a mortgage experience that's engineered to amaze. Welcome back to the Dave & Buster's Halftime Report. A check of Miami of Ohio and Illinois. The Illini up by seven here in the second quarter. Nathan Shieldhouse to Evan Wilson in the end zone as we take another look. Tremendous throw here, but look at the body control. Big man at the back of the end line. 6'10". <laughs> That's pretty close. You can see getting up there right at the goal line height. That's about 10 feet, but that does was good a in great the job of getting his feet down. Nice. Be up there with Ebron and uh, Austin Safarian Jenkins. A big day for Shieldhouse. Five touchdown passes so far. We're in the third quarter, and it has two way shutout 36 0. Look at Robert oh, trying Miami. to affect my tight end rankings, huh? <laughs> I just said up there. I know what you're doing. There. It's <laughs> halftime. We've got a 27 10 ball game. More halftime coming up right after this. Hey, morning, guys. Morning again? All right, fellas, listen up. Tight end. I need you to get a great release off this Sam Backer. Run Where does he get all that energy? Back. I need you over the ball. Yeah, how does he do that? He's so focused. Is he by with two hands? Are we going to have to remember all that? Here, give me a first down. Yo, Breeze, what's your secret? For long-lasting energy and sharper mental focus, it all starts with a spark, one of the many great products from AdvoCare. Oh no, here we go again. Oh dear, I need a little help here. I'm sorry, I don't have a USB port. Oh snap, you have a real keyboard too? This isn't going to end well for me, is it? Nope, definitely not ending well. Do you still think I'm pretty? That booth over there, that's our end zone. Brent, hit the outside and cut back. Scott, streak up the center. I'm curling out, crossing over. Ready? Great! When you've got great friends, Miller Lite and Sports Center Monday kickoff on ESPN, it's Miller time. <laughs> There's a new way to buy a car. It's called TrueCar. And TrueCar users save time and money. Use TrueCar and make sure you never overpay. Visit TrueCar.com today. Nirvana, In Utero, 20th Anniversary Editions. The final studio album, remastered, featuring unreleased tracks, demos, new mixes, and rare B-sides. Plus, for the first time, the complete live and loud concert, featuring unreleased performances, rehearsal footage, European TV appearances, and more. Nirvana, In Utero, 20th Anniversary Editions, and the complete live and loud concert, available now. This halftime report is presented by Dave and Buster's. Eat, drink, play, watch sports. East Carolina facing the Tar Heels of North Carolina. First quarter. Shane Carden complete here to Justin Hardy. Six yards, touchdown, 7-0 ECU. Hey, this ECU team kind of dangerous. Their only loss of the year to Virginia Tech. And, of course, North Carolina, I think, stinging a little bit from that loss to Georgia Tech a week ago. They seem to be in control. That one ended up losing us. East Carolina leading 21 to 10, tail end of the first half. Northern Illinois looking for its second straight win against a Big Ten school, not to mention a perfect 4-0 start. They lead Purdue 27-10 at the half. 
ditch the average game day, hit the new DNB Sports Bar at Dave and Buster's, where you can watch the games and play the games. Fuel the fun with game day specials like five dollar appetizers. Watch the games, play the games. The new DNB Sports Bar, only at your local Dave and Buster's. Your car. It's been your wingman, dining room, and best friend, baby maker, and baby soother. At Pennzoil, we know it doesn't matter what you do in your car. It only matters what you put in it. That's why Pennzoil is designed to give you unsurpassed engine protection so you can protect your car and the memories made in it. Save 50 cents per gallon on Shell fuel with a five-quart purchase of Pennzoil Synthetics. Make it a Pennzoil change. facing a major crisis. Girls are getting hot, causing guys to lose their cool. That's why the
facing a major crisis. Girls are getting hot, causing guys to lose their cool. That's why the people at Axe have developed Axe Black Chill. Keep your cool with the new Axe Black Chill antiperspirant. Welcome back to College Football on ESPN, presented by Five Hour Energy. to receive the kick to start this third quarter 27 to 10 for a northern illinois team that has had to come from behind in each of their three wins this season they score on their first five possessions beth moens along with 16-year nfl veteran joey galloway and an impressive performance through the first half by jordan lynch and that husky offense yeah and jordan lynch has become a better passer this season three touchdowns in that first half 16 of 20 has looked extremely comfortable in the pocket delivering the ball downfield and his receivers have done a nice job catching and making big plays 16 for 20 195 yards and three touchdown tosses two of those to duran brown And the boot from the Boilers. And returnable here for Tommy Lee Lewis. And he's got a huge hole out across the 30 with the putter to beat across midfield. Tommy Lee Lewis, three career kickoff returns for touchdowns and make it number four, 99 yards. And the special team six. And we'll have to wait a little bit to see Jordan Lynch here in the second half. The energy late in the second quarter for Purdue with the quarterback change to their true freshman Danny Etling and all that energy has just been sucked out of the building. Fourth career kick return TD for the junior out of Riviera Beach, Florida. 34 to 10 Huskies. Big play right up the gut, nice blocking. And then it's a foot race with the kicker. Foot racing with the kicker always <laughs> go bad for the kicker. Touchdown. I love pink. Pink's my favorite. Our favorite. We race for pink. Introducing new Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. From now until the end of the year, a portion of each sale benefits living beyond breast cancer to empower women affected by breast cancer. Raspberry 5-Hour Energy is available for a limited time, so get yours now. I ski with pink. I can't get enough pink. Come on, everyone. Buy Raspberry 5-Hour Energy, benefiting living beyond breast cancer. Come on, let's support pink. Looks good, doesn't it? Lexus IS. This is your move. 
only the best make Applebee's famous two for 20 menu. Am I right, Carl? Applebee's new honey pepper grilled entrees combine the sweet taste of pure honey with just a hint of cracked black pepper. They're so good, they made our two for 20 menu, where we promise only the best make the cut. But Carl, how do we know these are really the best? You want proof? Roll the proof. Okay, Carl, I'm convinced. Taste what's new in the neighborhood, like our new honey pepper grill. Now part of our two for 20 menu. One app, two entrees, only 20 bucks. See you tomorrow at late night for half-priced apps. Everything is ruined. It's okay. We're ready. When the things that matter most are on the line, make sure we are too. The fire and water cleanup team at 1-800-SERVE-PRO. Like it never even happened. We build tires, but not like anybody else. We build our tires for people, not just cars. So more than what your Cooper tires can do, it's about what you can do with your Cooper tires. Hurry in to get up to $80 back on four qualifying Cooper tires during our incredible Take the Money and Ride Savings event. Get your reward form and complete terms and conditions at a participating Cooper Tire dealer or coopertirerebates.com. Now's the time. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Lexus. Introducing a car designed with one purpose, to stand apart. The all-new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. And AT&T. Rethink possible. Back here in West Lafayette, the new head coach, Daryl Hazel, signing some autographs pre-game. Boiler Pete. Expectations were high for homecoming. They're not dashed yet. Still plenty of time, but certainly things looking awfully good for the visitors. Northern Illinois returning the opening kick of this second half. 99 yards for a score and a 34-10 lead. And Akeem Hunt will try and match it from his own one-yard line. Run out of bounds at the 25. We see Danny Etling for the first time through a couple of passes at the end of the second quarter. And now the first time Joey for the freshman walking out of the locker room, ready to head right onto the field. And the plan for Etling was to redshirt him. And the situation with the offense, uh, the struggles, the turnovers, and you got to use the guy that you didn't want to use till next year, but he's talented. And we've seen it a couple plays that he ran at the end of the first half to get points on the board. You can see it right now. This kid can play. Out of Terre Haute South. Showed up early, arrived in the spring to start school and work out with the club at spring practice. The give is to Akeem Hunt. They were able to run the ball decently. Uh, Rob Henry was ineffective, threw a couple of picks in the first half. And so late in the second quarter, Daryl Hazel makes the decision to go with Danny Etling. We saw on those pass plays, the coaching staff told us he's got a rope, he can smoke it, and he did. It's a debut, certainly, that the fans here didn't think they would be seeing so quickly. Etling gonna work some play action. On the run, directing traffic, and Etling almost throws the pick. And that's back across the body again. And, and that is a mistake that has got to be corrected. Etling's a young guy. You know, Henry did it earlier. He's an older guy. You, you expect him to know better. Etling, a, he's a young guy, goes back across his body. That's football 101. You tell your quarterback, Beth, when you start coaching, you do not throw late across your body. Now Ken Bishop, the senior from Lauderhill, Florida, was already counting his steps to the end zone and did everything but hold on. Third and eight for the youngster. Looking deep, incomplete, overthrowing Gary Bush, the senior out of Miami. Here's what you like about the play. Even though it's incomplete, Etling dropped back, got to his setup, and got the ball out. And that was one of the problems when you watched earlier. The ball just wasn't coming out. There was He was indecisive, Henry was, when he was in the pocket. Etling drops back, gets the ball out of his hands. Now, you can correct the throw. You can get that back later. 
but the idea of running the offense and making your decisions quick and getting the ball out is key for an offense to get on track. Webster, and they fake the punt and marching and lunging for the first down yardage is Justin Sims. The fake is effective. And a new set of downs for Etling and the Boilermakers. Love the play call. Take some chances. It's 34-10. You're one of, you're behind. It's been a long season already, even though it's early. It's still been long. I pull out every trick play I yeah. have in my playbook. I wouldn't leave <laughs> anything, any stone unturned in my playbook in these situations. Love the play call. Get a big first down. Nine yards on the pickup for Sins. Etling under center. Hunt the single setback, and Akeem dodges to his left for a pickup of a couple. Let's go down to Paul Carcaterra. Caught up with Northern Illinois head coach Rod Carey before the start of the second half. I asked him, what do you know about this freshman Danny Etling? He said, nothing. The game plan stays the same. Defensively, though, he's not happy with their run defense. He says they need an extra hat on the run and need to be aggressive on the corners and make Purdue a one-dimensional team passing offensively, though he loves the tempo Jordan Lynch has established. Yeah, Paul, they gave up 127 yards rushing in that first half. And that's one thing that uh, they will look to shore up here in the second. Etling with five wide out of the gun. And Danny into the front and another ricochet through the hands of Knopf. And that one had some extra zip on it. Yeah, a little Boilermaker steam on this thing right here. I mean, he gets this out there. But again, you can see him drop back, get in the pocket, and ball comes out right now. Now, this is going to be an adjustment for these receivers. It's a different ball, different quarterback, and different timing. And those are all things for a receiver you have to adjust to. And it's tough to do in game. Sometimes you like to do it in practice. These guys don't have to do it in the game. Third down today. They are three for nine with three turnovers. That one. And that one is incomplete. Deshaun Durant thought he had his third interception of the day. He wants his coach to challenge. He's already got two picks. Does he pull this one out of a blade of grass? Well, that is close. <laughs> that, that one's close. It hits the ground. I think it's a nice call by the official that, that this one hits the ground. Ooh. This one sails on Etling, goes over the receiver's head, but had a guy open. They have had plenty of time to look at it, and uh, I think the replay official agrees with you, Joey. They will not uh, need any extra time. That one hit the ground, so the boot is away. Lewis with the fair catch. Big night in the Big Ten this evening at the Horseshoe. Number 23, Wisconsin. At number four, Ohio State. At eight Eastern, five Pacific on ABC. Melvin Gordon in that running game. Braxton Miller's back at quarterback for the Buckeyes. Yeah, they showed Urban Meyer in the picture. You don't know who's going to start at quarterback. I mean, if, <laughs> if you know Braxton Miller's going to be the guy, he may get his picture in the graphic right now. It, Big decision in Columbus. Everyone's waiting to see where Braxton Miller starts. That's a critical early Big Ten season matchup for those two clubs. Breskison tossed aside. What a first half for Jordan Lynch. 16 for 20, 195 yards and three TDs. Same type of play they started with the first half. A nice throw to the to the sideline. Gets Jordan Lynch warmed up, gets him back in the rhythm of the game. That's dropped by Harris. How about a look? He's usually really, really good with his uh, uh, feet, Joey, but today the arm has been strong. Hasn't had to. Throws the ball better. Feels more comfortable standing in the pocket. Has delivered passes to eight different receivers today, and you can see them all here. I mean, he's just throwing them on the dime here. Guys downfield, short passes in the flat. He's been really good and really comfortable in the pocket throwing the ball. Offensive coordinator Bob Cole told us this week, whatever it is, Jordan Lynch has it. That special quality that allows you to play big in the big games and incomplete on the third down pass, broken up by Antoine Lewis. And the 
punting unit out there for Northern Illinois. Defensive coordinator Greg Hudson has to be pretty excited about getting off the field. This is a three and out. We talked earlier in, in the first half. Every time Northern Illinois had the ball, they went down and scored except the last drive. Here's a three and out bid for the Purdue defense. Yeah, the only time they failed to score was when the clock was running down at the end of the first half. Ball start. Offense, number 33. Five yard penalty, fourth down. That's two straight third and out, uh, three and outs for the Huskies offense. B.J. Knopf is the deep man for the punt here for Purdue. And he'll make the fair catch signal that he's got it at his own 35-yard line. 34 to 10, Northern Illinois with the lead over Purdue. And the Danny Etling era is underway in West Lafayette, the true freshman, back out on the field after this. Some things are designed to draw crowds. Others are designed to leave them behind. The all new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. When it comes to being better, what's better? Being better or worse? Better! Okay, and what are you better at? I'm better at telling jokes. Okay, let's see what you got. Knock, knock. Who's there? Queen. Queen who? Queen my dishes, please. Queen. It's queen to make it funny. He doesn't get it. It's not complicated. Better is better. And AT&T is the nation's fastest and now most reliable 4G LTE network. What's in the back? McDonald's new Mighty Wings. Mm, those look good. I'll play you for them. For what? My wings? First one to miss has to watch the other one eat. Let's go. Left up right. On one knee, off the scoreboard, through the uprights. Oh man, not again. Cap, you trying to get my wings? Nah, I'm right here. What's that noise? Coach in Purdue history, Joe Tiller won a Big Ten title and the 2001 trip to the Rose Bowl with Drew Brees, and he is down on the field with Paul Carcaterra. Thanks, Beth. Coach, back in the furnace. What are your finest memories coaching here at Purdue? Uh, the players and uh, the fans. You know, it's a people sport, and it's all about the people. You know, you were playing fast, Coach, before teams were playing fast, and it was the Norman College football. What was it like to play in that era when teams weren't playing fast with a guy like Drew Brees? Well, it was a lot of fun. They, they couldn't figure out what we were doing. So we had a honeymoon here at Purdue for a little while. Uh, then they all got together and figured out how to slow us down, but they never did totally stop us. Where did that style come from? Well, it came off the West Coast, you know. Uh, for myself, you know, I kind of picked up on it when I was up in the Canadian League. A three down football is very fast. It's wide open. But uh, really it came off the West Coast. Put your coaching hat on. They put in quarterback Danny Etling burned his red shirt. What do you think of that decision? I think it's a great decision. I think that you always uh, as much as we love Rob Henry uh, you always have to offer the fans hope. And I think when you go with a freshman and he has success he's extremely accurate as a thrower. He has some success. All of a sudden, everybody says, hey, let's go back and watch him play again. Speaking of success, to get back to 2001 and go to the Rose Bowl, what does this program need to do? Um, probably recruit some good players. 
Uh, they, they may have the quarterback, uh, but surround them with some playmakers. You need playmakers. You need some, you know, you need a few. You need a Vinnie Sutherland, uh, you know, he, Tim Stratton wins the wins a Mackey Award. You need some guys step up and make plays at critical times. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations on being in the Purdue Hall of Fame. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Paul, and a big day for Joe Tiller going into the into the hall. And a big day for that guy right there, Danny Etling. A couple of first downs on this drive. On in relief of Rob Henry. Came on in his first appearance in a Purdue uniform at the end of the second quarter. And we're trying to continue the tradition of great quarterbacks here at Purdue that have been inconsistent at that position over the last five or six years. And a chance here with Etling to be the man for a while. And another interception. It's picked off by Jimmy Ward, who's going to take it all the way. Touchdown, Northern Illinois. And a pick six for Ward, 62 yards. Jumped right in front of Dawkins. Did he go out of bounds right there? Well, the official well, the was right, right behind him. And, and looked down at the grass right. to yeah. see. For the review. Ruined on the field is a touchdown. This will be interesting because the official, you said, right on the sideline, looks down, I'm guessing, to see if there was a mark in the white. Yeah. Apparently didn't see anything because he let the play run. Nice play by Jimmy Ward. If it's the fourth turnover of the day for Purdue. The first time Etling gets picked. They're now waiting to see if it will cost them seven points. Ruling on the field is an interception return for a touchdown. They'll keep the ball, but will they have to go back out? Looks like what the 36 yard line maybe is when he made that cut. Still some lessons to be learned for the freshman. You can see how upset he is at himself for that throw. And things move quicker in games. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Nice play by Jimmy Ward, the all max safety. Looked like a corner on that one. Snatches the ball with his hands, the ability to stay in bounds, and then make the final move to get into the end zone. Nice play by Jimmy Ward. What a total team effort as well, Joey. They have scored offensively. They have scored with their special teams. And now the defense puts points on the board as well. As they are closing in on history, trying to become the first Mac school to beat two Big Ten opponents in the same regular season. Four turnovers have been costly today. The Huskies converting those into 17 points. The chase continues at Dover, tomorrow at 1 on ESPN. Dr. Pepper 10, the manliest low-calorie soda in the history of mankind. Bold flavor. Choose to blend in. Or you can choose to blend out. The all new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. Wow, those sandwiches look amazing. Really expensive. Wendy's. So just amazing. Oh, yeah. Introducing Wendy's Flatbread Grilled Chicken. Warm flatbread sandwiches in two bold new tastes. Now that's better. Reasons to follow in others' footsteps? Zero. Things weighing on your mind when running? Zero. Reasons to buy an ultra shoe? Zero. Drop. Zero Drop places your heel and forefoot the same distance from the ground for natural posture, more power, and better running technique. Stress caused from squeezed toes? Zero. 
Ultra's foot-shaped toe box lets your toes relax, creating a natural platform for more stability, maximum comfort, and improved performance. Connection lost between foot and ground? Zero. Ultra gives you a responsive ride, plus full A-bound cushioning underfoot. Number of other companies that combine zero drop, foot shape, and full cushioning in a single shoe? Zero. Introducing Ultra. Visit ultrazerodrop.com now for free shipping. Wear them for 30 days. If you don't run better, send them back. Zero questions asked. Ultra. Zero drop, zero limits. Well, points leader Matt Kenseth. Trying to ride that train all the way to the championship. He's two for two in the chase for the Sprint Cup. Trying to get even further away from Kyle Busch and Jimmy Johnson and the rest of the field. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Dover Sunday at 1 on ESPN and on the Watch ESPN app. Matt Kenseth, he's won both races, but he's only up 14, Joseph. Um, no, this is... It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but 14 is hard to come back on, especially the way Matt Kenseth has run this season. Yeah. Five victories in the regular season and now two straight. It's tough to make up on a guy running like that. 13 guys, by the way, instead of 12 because of that uh, controversy at the end of the regular season. Let's send it now to Wendy Nix. Beth, thank you. UCF in South Carolina. Remember Gamecock quarterback Connor Shaw out with an injured right shoulder. But here's Mike Davis. His third 50-yard run of the season, 53 yards into the end zone. South Carolina now on the board, 10-7 ball game in the third quarter. Boy, that would be huge for UCF. And an opportunity UCF. to beat a SEC school. Yeah, and they're undefeated on the season. Have a really nice season down there. So this is just another feather in their cap. South Carolina losing their quarterbacks. Tough situation to rebound from sometimes when that when your leader goes down. They want to try and win the American Athletic Conference. They could be looking at a BCS trip at the end of the season. Pass completed to D'Angelo Yancey. Here's the teaching going on with the first year head coach Daryl Hazel and the true freshman quarterback Danny Etling after the interception that was returned for a touchdown. And Etling back to work and Hunt couldn't hold on. Trying to set up the screen for him. And that's Hunt's second drop of the game. Coming out of the backfield, you know, when you're when you're the big play guy, again, we talked about the size, 5'9, 184 the scat back kind of guy. You have got to catch these balls out of the backfield. That's where you make your money. It's not between the tackles for the smaller guys. They run him a lot between the tackles, but I'd like to see more getting him out of the park and deliver, delivering him a ball out in the flat. He just has to catch it. There's one of their third down specialists, Gary Bush, number six in black, bunch to the right. Here on a third and five. And another flag. Ball start, offense, number 84. Five yard penalty. Third down. Another dead ball penalty. Those ones are the ones that'll drive coaches absolutely nuts. There's just no excuse. Things happen in the in while the game is going on because football's a fast game. Sometimes your hand gets caught. Sometimes, you know, you grab a guy. But these ones when the ball is dead is just unacceptable. I believe that's five pre-snap. Eight or nine now flags total. A couple of those were turned down. At one. Fires across the middle, caught out to the 45-yard line and a first down pickup to D'Angelo Yancey. He's been most successful on those throws across the middle. And now they'll up the tempo. Nettling calling for it from the center. There was a wobbly throw that was tipped at the line but still caught for the first down into NIU territory. I think more impressive than the ball coming out of Etling's hands is how quickly he makes his decision. He gets back in the pocket. Even with the interception, it was the right decision. The ball was just off and behind the receiver, but his decision-making is impressive. Much quicker here for Purdue as they've got the Huskies backpedaling a little bit. Another completion inside the 30, and another first down pickup to Danny Antrim. This is the most excited crowd you've ever seen down by 31. Yeah. I mean, they are excited about what Etling is showing them right now, and it's impressive to watch. Well, as Joe Tiller uh, told our Paul Carcaterra a few minutes ago, hope, it's a remarkable thing. And they have a lot of hope in their freshman quarterback. 
Down to the 21-yard line. Caught by Sterling Carter. Another 11-yard pickup. Move those chains. I mean, some of these people are standing up. <laughs> they're, down, they're down 31 points, and the fans are now standing up. And, and that's what bringing in a young, fresh quarterback that they've been told he is the future. Now they're getting a chance to see a little bit of it and get excited about it. Indy's one of their own. An Indiana product out of Terre Haute South. High formation here for Etling as he goes under center. They have been undone offensively by penalties and turnovers thus far. Etling looking right now, rolling left and getting all turned around every which way. And incomplete at the 15-yard line. Jason Meehan was bringing the pressure on Etling. No one open, nice coverage by the NIU secondary. Etling again makes a nice decision. Doesn't take a risk with the ball. Gets rid of it to the sideline. Only place that ball can be caught is if the receiver can haul it in. So far, Etling 5 of 7 for 64 yards. And it's been pretty impressive. Besides the interception, his decision making has been really good. Yeah, since the pick, he uh, really hasn't been flustered at all. Bouncing back, they're showing blitz. And they'll bring it. Etling, good protection to the end zone. Just wide. No touchdown, they call it. On the pass to Cameron Posey. 16 yards. And if it stands, the first of Etling's career. Does the left foot come down inbounds before the knee hits out? I don't know. This one is a little closer than I thought. I thought he had a foot down, but now looking at the replay. I thought initially he drifted wide, but if that foot, if he can get the toe down before the knee hits the black, the black would be out of bounds. The ruling on the field, by the way, is a touchdown, so they would need evidence to prove otherwise, or else the TD stands. On the crowd, the seem groans happy. from the crowd just saw the replay on the big screen, and they uh, the excited crowd that they, uh, <laughs> they think it, that he was out. They they've already made their decision. <laughs> The ruling from the stands coming at the further review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. <laughs> Ellen's a young guy. They want, they want to get him his first <laughs> touchdown. Pretty nice throw and, and an even better catch. And an impressive drive Posey. coming off of the turnover the last time he was out there. Yeah. For Etling to drive the team down. Eight plays, 75 yards, and Danny Etling's first touchdown. A 16-yarder to Cameron Posey. <laughs> 41 to 17. So Danny Etling, after the interception that was returned for a touchdown, he comes back strong on that drive, Joey, and shows a little bit of moxie and fires the touchdown strike to Cameron Posey. Yeah, it was dead in here. And then all of a sudden, Etling comes in with a minute left in the second half, completes two passes, and then comes down the second half has been even better. His decision-making for a young quarterback gets back in the pocket, sets his feet, surveys the field, and gets the ball out. And that's what they have to be excited about. The crowd is into it now. Again, they're down 31 points, but they're excited about what's going on. How about the last drive for Etling? Finding some success across the middle. And even uh, getting some help from a tip or two. Look at that ball come out. I mean, look at this ball snap out of his hand and then drops a dime in the corner of the end zone as he's rolling out. Terrific throw, but even better decision making. On the return here for Northern Illinois after Etling takes his club 
downfield. Six for eight on that drive, 80 yards passing for Danny. And now we hand it back over to Jordan Lynch and the Huskies of Northern Illinois have had to punt it away the last two times they've had it after scoring on their first five possessions and then also throwing in a 99-yard kick return for a touchdown to open up the third quarter. Lynch today, awfully good. 17 for 23 with three TDs. And on the ground, and a lot of room up the middle for Cameron Stingley, proving himself to be a good power back. Pick up a 15. Stingley, the big back, 244. You can see he's a load, only 6'1". I mean, he's like a bowling ball coming through there. Even when you do get a hit on this guy, he just keeps going. Why not? They'll give it to him again. He gets to the 46. And how about this for Northern Illinois today? The second time a MAC team has scored 40 or more on a Big Ten school. Ball State did it to Indiana. They've done most of that in the first half. You add the kick return on top of it, but most of that came in the, in the first half. Bob Carey in his first year as the head coach, their offensive coordinator last year. Let's check in with Wendy Nix. Steve, yeah. Well, thank you. South Carolina again playing without quarterback Connor Shaw out with an injured shoulder. Here's backup QB Dylan Thompson in for Shaw. The three-yard run. South Carolina now leading UCF the first time UCF has trailed this season. That game on ABC on ESPN. It's Oklahoma State and West Virginia. Keith Harris Jr. this time getting the call as he pulls his way inside the 35. So Northern Illinois on the ground this possession, trying to work that clock a little bit as well as we're under five and a half to go here in the third quarter. It's helpful to have this kind of running game. When you have a lead in the second half, Etling has got the Purdue offense moving again. Take some time off the clock and run the football. Another dose of Stingley, and you love what Dino Babers, the head coach at Eastern Illinois, said after last week's game. Yeah, he talked about Stingley being tough to tackle, and, and older guys sometimes look at the game of football and say, I would like to get back out there and play. <laughs> Not first guys like Stingley. I mean, he was more than happy to be on the sideline because Stingley is tough to tackle, and you can see that he's a between-the-tackle, downhill running back that doesn't go down on first contact. He's alongside Lynch here on first down. The play action with him, trying to get him the ball out in the flat, and it's deflected. Knocked down by the oncoming rush, Jelani Phillips. Coach Hudson said he needed his front seven to create habit for Lynch. They get in his face, they drive him out of the pocket, tip the ball, set up a second and long, but that's what they need to do is make Lynch uncomfortable. Second and 10. Stingley, nice cut, gets close to the 20, and that'll bring up a third and short. Here's Paul Carcaterra. You know, we're watching Cameron Stingley right now really get loose in this running game. He was a linebacker earlier in his career at Northern Illinois. Jerry Kill brought him in at that position. They switched him to running back last year, hardly any carries. Last week, 134 yards. This guy's getting going, and a great compliment to Jordan Lynch. Yeah, the junior out of Romeoville, Illinois, spent part of the summer watching a lot of Adrian Peterson and Arian Foster game tape to improve his running skills. Harris takes it to the five. First and goal, Huskies following Tyler Luce, Aiden Conlon, Andrew Ness, Jared Volk, and Ryan Brown, the big ones up front. Give these guys a lot of credit on this drive. Had a three and out last time on the field. Purdue gets a momentum on their side, and the offensive line has come out with a great attitude and a grind mode because for the rest of this game, they will be in a four-minute type of offense, which takes time off the clock. This could be Stingley time right here. He's the deep guy. And it is Cameron. Gets the call. Will Lucas makes the tackle and loses a helmet. 
And you can hear the uh, one of the officials down on the field, 45's got a helmet off. He will have to come out unless Purdue wants to burn a timeout to keep him in. That's a new rule this year, but it looks like they will keep the timeout and Lucas will have to come off. Second and goal. Stingley again. Nowhere to go. Good penetration that time by the Boilers. First man there was Anthony Brown. A nice play, and Coach Hudson talked to them. They need to get some penetration up front. Everyone's taking Anthony Brown the safety. They're in the red zone, they're on the five yard line, so the safeties won't be as deep. They will be near the, near the box and have a chance to make a play. A nice tackle by Anthony Brown. Well, they've tried twice on the ground and they've lost yardage. Now with four wideouts, Lynch rolling. Looking for a block, he'll take it himself and score! Touchdown, Jordan Lynch! Adds a rushing tally to his three touchdown passes today. And that matches his effort in their upset at Iowa in the season opener as he gets them closer to another Big Ten win here. They've won three of their last seven against the Big Ten, Joey, working on four of eight. I guess we can't really call them upsets anymore with their success. And this is what you expect from your senior playmaking quarterback and Jordan Lynch rallies the offense, get back on the field, take the momentum away from Purdue, make a good decision, keep it in your hands and get in the end zone. He watched Danny Etling take the Boilers 75 yards in seven minutes. He said, okay, Rook, let me show you what I got. How about 11 plays, 67 yards in four and a half minutes? And how about that, the largest win for a max school over a Big Ten opponent in the history of the league, 31 points, and NIU is matching it right now. No. Lynch, 17 for 24, 202 yards and three scores. He's now rushed for 35 yards and a score. And a memorable day so far for the Huskies in West Lafayette. With him most of bringing it out. Terrific day of college football coming your way. It'll continue tonight on ESPN at 6.30 Eastern. It's number 21 Ole Miss, number one Alabama. College football primetime presented by Hampton Hotels. And there's your AP poll this week with Alabama still on top. Followed by Oregon, Clemson, Ohio State, and Stanford. And how about that three of the top four on the family of networks? Five top ten teams, as a matter of fact, on the ESPN networks today. After a uh, less than par slate of games last week, Joey, we've got some good ones to watch the rest of the day. Yeah, finally getting into conference play now. You get some really good matchups. Big one in the Big Ten with Ohio State, Wisconsin. Big one in the SEC, Georgia, LSU. So once, you know, in early in the season, you see these blowout games and everyone's all upset, just waiting, waiting for conference play. Finally, it's here. Well, Rod Carey, uh, certainly at this point looking like they are going to take a whole lot of momentum in the league play where they are the two-time defending champions. Danny Etling on the run. Now to the 23-yard line, chased out by Donovan Gordon. You know, we talked, we talked to Coach Carey. What are the keys for NIU to win the game? He said win the battle up front. They've done that. He said win the kicking game where they have the kickoff return for a touchdown and create turnovers. And they have absolutely done that and taken one of those to the house, creating four turnovers. So, you know, Coach Carey and this NIU football team, they've come in here today and done exactly 
what they plan to do to win. 17 points, as a matter of fact, off of four turnovers today, including three interceptions. Two of Rob Henry, he got pulled in the second quarter. Replaced by the true freshman, Danny Atlin, who's already been picked once and almost picked again there by Michael Sensic Katarina. Has to get better with his eyes. You know, these, these, these defenders will read the quarterback's eyes here. Etling staring down his receiver, you can see it. Santa Catamarina almost picks off the second with a chance to take it to the house, but they're reading his eyes right now, and he'll get better at that. As we're watching him, it's hard to tell that he's a freshman because he does so many things well, but there's a couple things that he will clean up. His eyes will be one of them. Go for it here on fourth and five from their own 24. Etling feeling the heat go right on, and Danny's got the first down more. Diving to the 42-yard line. Eighteen yards on the run. Love to see it. Love to see the playmaking ability. Love to see him looking downfield. Doesn't see anyone open. Tuck the ball, get out of the pocket, make a first down. Etling checks down the front. Third time today that's hit him in the hands. That one had some steam on it. Yeah. Now, the, the first two, Hunt's fault. Number three, Etling, you got to realize, you got a running back only a couple yards away, take some steam off of it. Some of these big arm quarterbacks, they don't realize. <laughs> you're only five yards away. We need you to just back it off just a touch. He's already thrown it 20 times today. A touchdown and an interception. Incomplete as that one bounced off the turf. Looking for Shane Mikeski. You can see defensive coordinator Jace, Jake Neiman is realizing Edling is looking pretty comfortable. Let me send a couple blitzes at him, put a little pressure on him, drive him out of the pocket, make him make his decisions even faster than he wants to. It's a third and long. They have not eased Edling into this game. Already yeah. 21 passes. When he's been in the game, uh, we're going to see some passes and see what he's see what he's worth. Third and ten. On a drive where they've already converted a fourth down play. Etling escapes, sends that one into the crowd. Fourth down and ten. And a flag down on the far sideline. Add to the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the bench, on the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. That is two bench calls today. You rarely see those ever called. We've had yeah. one called on Purdue and now one called on NIU. Not quite sure what happened over there. Bench unsportsmanlike conduct for the Huskies. Yeah, Coach Carey is not happy about that call. Moves the chains for Purdue when NIU had a chance to get off the yeah. field. Pretty good defensive stand and then the sidelines give one away. So instead of a punt, it's first and ten. Well, we knew coming in that this was the side of the football for the Huskies that had to improve over the course of the season. And after today, heading into league play, and there's the pressure and the sack of Eckling. They led the nation in that category coming in. 14 sacks in the last two weeks. And a loss of four there. Yeah, and here comes pressure by the defensive line from NIU. Meehan gets to Ellen, takes, takes him down. Hunt on the run. Get some of the yardage back to the 42-yard line. Jamal Bass with the tackle. Pick up a five. Going to bring up a third and nine. Incomplete looking for Hunt coming out of the backfield. Fourth and nine. They've already gone for it once on this drive, and they'll get some wide receivers and a couple of tight ends out there. Yeah, no question about that. You go for this. And again, this is a ball trying to go to Akeem Hunt in the open field, give him a chance. And that is six straight incompletions for Etling. And now we have a fourth and nine. Can he get it right on this one?
They need the 34. That one a little behind, but a nice catch by Mikeski, and he will be stopped short. Denied by the Husky defense. Johnny Fauston. And let's see where the forward progress got him, at least within the conversation of a first down. This was time out for measurement. Initially appeared oh, to be well short. Spot. That is wow. Boy, that's generous. That is a generous spot to say the least. Heck of a hit, heck of a tackle, way to rally to the ball. They forced him to go underneath defensively. That's what you want to do and then rally and make a tackle. Johnny Fauston is going to come in and boy, I don't even know, Joe, if he got to the 34 and they're giving him oh, the no, 33. That's nice. Boy, that is nice. That's a big pop by Fauston coming on and Jamal Bass. And it's still well short. And the Huskies will take over on downs when we come back for the fourth quarter in West Lafayette. The third quarter belonged to the visitors. A 99-yard kick return for a touchdown. A pick six as the defense gets in on the act. And the Jordan Lynch show continues 48-17. How does Verizon's 4G LTE network rate with our blue shirt? We asked Christina, the beta tester. Verizon has the largest 4G LTE network, which means you get great coverage in more places. Usually when I'm talking on the phone, I'm also shopping, so it's nice to have the multitasking ability. The speed on this network was lightning fast. I was completely blown away. All right, guys, gotta get back to my run. Beta tested, blue shirt approved. Choose any carrier, any phone, any plan. Get the HTC One from Verizon, only at Best Buy. Hunt, farm, or trail, Polaris has it all. Legendary ATVs like the powerful new Sportsman 570 EFI. Value-minded side-by-sides featuring the new Ranger 570 and full-size workhorses, including the 60-horsepower Ranger XP 900 and new five-passenger Ranger Crew 900. Polaris, hardest working, smoothest riding. Huge rebates and low financing available now during the Polaris factory authorized clearance. Getting a complete meal on the table under 10 bucks? Now that's smart. The new KFC 9.99 six-piece deal. Six pieces of chicken, three biscuits, and one large side, just 9.99. Today tastes so good. Goodyear knows there are times when you need to get out at a moment's notice. When a map can't tell you where you need to go. And you need to get there on road or off. That's why everything we learn making tires for expert drivers inspires what we roll into the new Goodyear Wrangler with Kevlar. Goodyear, more driven. Don't let unfresh pitch ruin your game. Next time, use Right Guard Extreme Fresh. With 72 hours of uncompromising freshness, it's the antiperspirant that changes your game. Right Guard for the win. Here's Bubba Watson, the master of the escape. Da da da, da da da. Ooh, 375 laser. Ooh. Ooh. Da da da. Da da da. Moves in, shoots, and scores. Hurry off the bounce. Wow! Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. Da da da. Dominating win next. Da -na -na, da -na -na. Watch college football live all season long on Watch ESPN. Download the app or visit watchespn.com. Oh, it's been a good day so far for Diesel, the Northern Illinois Husky. 10 in the first, 17 in the second, 21 more in the third as all three facets of the game scored in that third quarter offense, defense, and special teams. And they have just picked up a fourth down stop to take over the ball. 
And they are in good shape right now to become the first MAC team to ever beat two Big Ten schools in the regular season. With a win over Iowa on opening day and the comfortable lead right now over Purdue. Up 31 would match the biggest win ever for a MAC-10 school over a Big Ten opponent. You mentioned the two wins in the first one versus Iowa. They had to come back. They, they were down in that game and had to fight their way back. And this one, uh, they, they've just been good all day long and been ahead. And what could be an historic day for the Huskies and send them on their way into Mac play next week. This is what is setting them up with the comeback win against Iowa. They trailed much of that second half, then rallied to tie it with five minutes left, and then Jimmy Ward with a big pick at midfield with a minute 24 to go. And that set up Matthew Sims for the game winner in Iowa City. So not only two Big Ten wins, but two Big Ten road wins if this score holds through the fourth quarter. Ward with another interception today for a touchdown of Deshaun Durant with a couple of picks. Tommy Lee Lewis with the catch on third down and fourth and six here. Yeah, Coach Carey won't be happy that Tommy Lee Lewis went out of bounds in this situation. You want to stay in, stay in bounds at all costs, even if it is third down and, and you're coming off the field, stay in bounds. Knoffs back at his own 15 yard line. I punt Knoff with the fair catch at the 17. That's a 45 yarder. All Northern Illinois this afternoon. The youngster Danny Etling back out there when we return. Coke Zero reminds you, it's not your fault you watch football all day. Man has always been captivated by watching stuff. And as civilization progressed, man was able to watch even more riveting stuff. And now scientists have developed HD to romance your eyeballs. How can you look away? You can't. So relax and do what your brain was made to do. Watch stuff. Because with real Coke taste and zero compromise, Coke Zero lets you enjoy everything. Some things are designed to draw crowds. Others are designed to leave them behind. The all-new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. Applebee's doesn't just give you juicy steak. They top it off with sweet honey and a kick of cracked black pepper in their signature honey pepper sauce. And they top that top off with crispy fried jalapenos and onions. And to top the top of that top off, it's on their famous two for 20 menu. Applebee's new honey pepper sirloin. See you tomorrow. Every generation has their lees. These are yours. Introducing the new Lee Modern Series for Men. Designed to look better, crafted to fit better. This is legendary American denim. This is the new Lee. Oh. I'm missing kickoff for this. <laughs> Fear of missing out on football can be triggered by many things. Download NFL Mobile. Get coverage of every NFL game exclusively from Verizon. Three years in a row, J.D. Power & Associates has ranked Quicken Loans highest in the nation in customer satisfaction. Because amazing client service is what we live for. Quicken Loans, for a mortgage experience that's engineered to amaze. The team that refuses to be beat won't be beat. Go get what is yours now. Let's go. Jordan Lynch and the Northern Illinois Huskies with the 48-17 lead. He's still got his helmet on. I wonder how much longer Lynch will be in there. In the meantime, the Purdue offense back out there with Danny Etling. It is first action of the season coming on in relief of Rob Henry late in the first half. 
and playing through the second half, picking up his first career touchdown pass. A 16-yarder to Cameron Posey. And the future has arrived. He's the 12th rated quarterback in the country on ESPN.com as a pocket passer. And not only is he coming into the game, he's having a chance to run some two-minute offense, and, and that is valuable experience for a young quarterback. I'm sure he's done it in practice, but the games move so much faster, and it makes your decision-making happen so much quicker in these situations, not as much coaching, because things are happening on the fly, so you have to go out there and sort of freelance a little as a quarterback, so it's valuable for a young guy. And there's freshmen around him, too. Uh, true freshman Dalen Dawkins in the backfield, D'Angelo Yancey, the wide receiver. Jason King on the offensive line. The catch made by Antrop, and then the ball out at the tail end of the play. And the official signaling that it is turnover number five. Generated by this Husky defense. The big hit by, guess who, Jimmy Ward, and then Dominique Ware jumped on it. Was the knee down? No, it was not. Yeah. And was it a catch, I think, is the other thing worth looking at. I think it's definitely a catch. I think he has a chance to tuck this away and turn up field. Oh, well, he is bobbling in the ball. Yeah. I know Purdue's hoping for a review here. Then they'll get it. Previous play is under review. The ruling on field was a reception, fumble, recovered by the defense. Ruling is a fumble. Will it stay that way? Find out with us on the other side. Well, thank you. They say no good deed goes unpunished. And some days it seems true. But we keep on doing the things that matter. Like buying new Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. From now to the end of the year, a portion of each sale benefits Living Beyond Breast Cancer to empower women affected by breast cancer. New Raspberry 5-Hour Energy. It's one good deed that will go just right. You can choose to blend in. Or you can choose to blend out. The all-new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. Battle's over. We got our PlayStation 4s a while ago, got here early. There were like at least a million robots. We won, by the way. That's Dave. He's a crazy man. You should have been there. Play the future first. Grab a Taco Bell five buck box, and you could win a PlayStation 4 before it's released. Where are you guys from? Hey, Jones, let's go catch some balls, man. Where does he get all that energy? We just finished two days, and he's not even tired. How can he still focus? Hey, Fitz, look sharp. Where did he get those tires? Hey, Drew, what's your secret? For long-lasting energy and sharper mental focus, it all starts with the Spark, one of the many great products from Advocare. Breeze. Last year, the U.S. used enough plastic water bottles to stretch around the Earth over 190 times. Each Brita filter can take up to 300 of those bottles out of the equation. When we left you, Northern Illinois had forced a turnover, but uh, upon further review, they ruled this an incomplete pass. And therefore, no fumble and no recovery. So Purdue will keep it third down and 10. Another tough situation for Etling. I mean, this has not been easy. Not only the deficit, but they've been in a number of third and long situations. These are tough. Another shotgun for Danny. Feeling the heat and going down. Second sack of the second half. This time it's George Rainey. And NIU, we talked about their struggles on defense. They've had a really nice defensive day here, able to get pressure on the quarterback with their front four, which allows them to leave seven guys in coverage. And that's important if you're struggling to stop people from scoring, your front four pressure will change that for you. 
Tommy Lee Lewis is the deep guy. Corey Webster, or Cody Webster, excuse me. They've already faked the punt today successfully for a first down and the boot to Lewis. He's got a kick return touchdown. He won't get the punt return TD there, but it will be NIU ball on the Purdue side of the field. Here's what we talk about with Purdue and the recruiting job that they're going to have to do here in years to come for Daryl Hazel. Absolutely. You look at Purdue in the center here. You got Notre Dame and Indiana in the state of Indiana. Then you, they're surrounded. You got Northwestern, Illinois, Ohio State, Louisville, Kentucky, Michigan up top. What do you do when you talk to Cruz What do you do to bring kids to West Lafayette and bypass these other places? What do you sell to these kids to get these recruits to commit? Quarterback change here for Northern Illinois. Matt McIntosh is in. Yeah, da uh, Daryl Hazel called it the state of Purdue. And he's talked about all the surrounding states as well as uh, uh, getting into Western Pennsylvania the areas that they need to lock down guys from. They're also headed down to Georgia, Florida, and Texas to try and bring in some more playmakers that uh, the old ball coach Joe Tiller talked about earlier today. Yeah, it's so detailed. He would like to get 75% of his kids from these states that are that are touching and, and plus Western Pennsylvania, as you mentioned. He wants to get 75% of his kids from those states and then get the rest from states like Georgia, Florida, and Texas add some speed and athleticism. He is also, as you are well aware, Joey, a Jim Trestle guy. He was an assistant coach for seven years at Ohio State and wants to instill the same kind of discipline and consistency that Trestle brought with him when he arrived in Columbus. One of the first things he's going to need to clean up is, are the penalties. I mean, it, it was bad. It's been bad early in this game. The penalties this team has accrued it makes it tough to win. The turnovers, penalties, you can't win like that. Oh, wow. Cameron Stingley right now, close to the 20. So Matt McIntosh is the sophomore from Evansville, Indiana. He was Jordan Lynch's backup last year and still has the job this season. He got into the game last week, but because they have had some close calls and have had to come from behind in their previous three games, this is just his second appearance of the season. Jordan Lynch was spectacular in the first half today and then Closed it out with another TD, a rushing touchdown in the second half for Jordan. Three passing touchdowns on the day. So a total of eight touchdowns Jordan is responsible for against the Big Ten in wins over Iowa and now apparently Purdue. And basically most of this has happened in the first half. They came out in the, in the, second, in the second half, only 12 yards passing because because of the lead, they're able to just run the football. So what he's done today, give him a lot of credit, most of it just in the first half. If this was a close game and he had to continue to play, those numbers would be outstanding. McIntosh keeps seventh in the Heisman voting last year, Joe. You think he's got a shot? At, we've seen some awfully good quarterbacks on the ESPN2 noon games this year, like Teddy Bridgewater and David Fales and Braxton Miller. C.J. Brown at Maryland has done a terrific job with the Terps, and now today Lynch. I think Jordan Lynch is a guy that not a lot of people talk about because he, he's just not flashy. You know, he's not a great athlete. He's just a guy that gets the job done. He's a guy that knows how to win. He competes, and everyone, he, you know, he hit the scene last year with the numbers, you know, the, the 25 passing touchdowns and 19 rushing touchdowns uh, go to the BCS Bowl. Everyone starts to take a look at Jordan Lynch. And then this season, even better numbers. And here today, he's been that kind of guy with the three passing touchdowns. Now think about the fourth and one a little bit longer. So we'll take a break. 8.22 to go in West Lafayette. Monday Night Football, Dolphins, Saints, 8.25 Eastern on ESPN. Some things are designed to draw crowds. Others are designed to leave them behind. The all-new 2014 Lexus IS. 
It's your move. Can I take your order? Can I get a cheeseburger, please? And a... You, you said cheeseburger? For breakfast, try our tasty chicken biscuit. What does a man who spent the last 16 years of his life wearing a helmet know about great hair? I think the answer to that question is clear. Clear Men with Mint, Ginseng, and Tea Tree feeds the scalp for great flavor. Please stand by for this urgent message. Warrior Custom Golf is at it again. Call now and receive the new Warrior Signature Series Hybrid Iron absolutely free. No gimmicks, no purchase necessary. Over a $200 retail value free. Thanks to the public's honest feedback from Warrior's last free hybrid offer. Warrior has developed this new state-of-the-art hybrid iron. And as a way of saying thanks, they're sending it out one last time, yours absolutely free. All we ask is your final feedback before it's released to retail stores. Warrior's new 19 degree signature series hybrid comes with enhanced perimeter weighting technology, producing a more explosive rebound effect on impact. You'll hit this club longer and straighter than any other iron, and all you pay is shipping and customization. Over a $200 retail value free. Call now and get Warrior's latest hybrid, the new Warrior signature series hybrid club. Absolutely free. No purchase necessary. It's time to make Warrior's hybrid iron your new weapon of choice. ESPN College Football is presented by the makers of Five Hour Energy. Take it after lunch. Be clear and alert for hours. Oh, a hidden gem here in West Lafayette. Terrific golf course. Uh, the Boilermaker Golf Complex. 28 NCAA championship tournaments they've qualified for. They won uh, 12 league titles, and there's a championship trophy for Purdue. And now back to the football, fourth and one for Northern Illinois, and they'll go for it, and they'll throw for it, and they will score on it. Touchdown, Huskies. 18 yards, Matt McIntosh to Tim Simish. And we are now looking at a score that represents the biggest win for a Mac school ever over a Big Ten opponent. Purdue's got eight minutes and 14 seconds to try and change that. The greatest season in MAC history last year for the Huskies it included a trip to a BCS Bowl, a first for the Mid-American Conference. Can Northern Illinois Get back there again. They are looking to get to 4 and 0 with nothing but league games in front of them. Yeah. And right now that margin is at 38 points. Nice play call by Bob Pole. Leaked the tight end out to the flat, which they've done all day. Easy touchdown. Are you settling for the same old, same old? Or are you making it the original with Pizza Hut's $10 any pizza deal? Any pizza, any size, any toppings. Delivery, dine-in, or carry out. Just ask for or use promo code 10 any We all have a choice. Make it great. have inside your phone says a lot about you. It's time the outside does too. Only AT&T lets you customize a Moto X that's designed by you. Choose colors, accents, and much more. Get it now for zero down, only at AT&T. You can choose to blend in. Or you can choose to blend out. 
the all-new 2014 Lexus IS. It's your move. Applebee's two for 20 menu is one app and two entrees for only 20 bucks. Only the best make their two for 20 menu, like the new Honey Pepper Grill entrees. Let's check out the action. They're flavoring, savoring, and more flavoring. He could go all the way. He could get out of the way. Help yourself. Kick off game day in the neighborhood with Applebee's two for 20 menu. One app, two entrees, only 20 bucks. See you tomorrow and see you late night for half priced apps. The Horseshoe in Columbus, the nation's longest winning streak on the line tonight. ABC Saturday Night Football, the Badgers and the Buckeyes. Urban Meyer and Gary Anderson squaring off Melvin Gordon and Ryan Shazier. Can they stop the Badgers run game? And how many Buckeye quarterbacks will it take? Braxton Miller is set to return. Kenny Guyton's been dynamite in his performances while Braxton was out. And through the end zone on the kickoff. Let's send it back to the studio and Wendy. Beth, thank you. It's a Taco Bell Live Moss moment, courtesy of Nate Shieldhouse. He had five touchdown passes in the first half. That ties an Illinois record for touchdown passes and a half. The Illini went on to win under the direction of Shieldhouse. The final tally, 50 to 14 over Miami of Ohio. Well, Wendy, uh, an impressive performance for Illinois. I think they've got uh, Nebraska right next week. They'll be headed to uh, to Lincoln and what could be a pair of one loss teams there. Nathan Schoenhaus, Taylor Martinez. Illinois successful and it certainly appears that Northern Illinois will join them with a win today. Trying to get to four and oh. And uh, not much drama left for the non-AQs, the list of unbeatens has dwindled quickly early in the season as Etling is sacked for the third time. It is down to Northern Illinois. Fresno State and Navy. And you see the best win for each. Fresno got a victory over Boise State. Navy still has to play in South Bend. And Northern Illinois has Ball State and Toledo back to back in mid-November. If they play like they did today, offensively, defensively, special teams, they've been exceptional. If they play like they did, they won't have a problem running their schedule. And then we'll get into the conversation we had last year if one of these teams crashes the BCS party. Danny Etling with the long completion to Cameron Posey and a flag down. Well, we certainly remember last year Pass at the end of the season. Defense, number 20. Penalties decline, first down. 44 yards on that pass. Nice throw by Etlin getting this ball up, getting it out, giving his receiver a chance to make a play. Man-to-man -man <laughs> coverage, a lot of guys believe. Throw it up, give my receiver a chance to make the play. Make sure, as a receiver, that you were the only one that comes down with this football. Not only, not only did he come down with it, also gets the pass interference. And he held down. A little help from the shoulder pads there. A nice catch by Posey. I'm trying to dump it off. But we, uh, we remember the controversy and surrounding the decision for well, the rules basically that allowed Northern Illinois to play in a BCS Bowl. They went to the Orange Bowl. The reason they got there was because Rod Carey, then the offensive coordinator in his club, beat Daryl Hazel's Kent State team. Kent State was actually in line to go. They were the higher ranked team in the BCS standings and then lost the MAC championship game to Northern Illinois. They jumped up six spots as four teams in front of them lost. And that allowed the Huskies to get into the Orange Bowl. So Hazel knows all too well what Northern is capable of. And there's Hazel last year with Kent State. And Dave Doran, who has since left to NC State. And all kinds of late heroics. Kent ties it to send it into overtime. Jordan Lynch with a scoring play in the extra session. They go two OTs. And then with the lead, the interception in the end zone to end it. 
and Northern Illinois wins the MAC title, and they jump from number 21 in the standings to number 15. And that was good enough to get them into the BCS because they finished ahead of two conference AQ champs, Louisville and Wisconsin. And didn't get ranked till week 14, went all season long unranked. And within week 14, they get ranked. And by week 15, they jump up into the top 16 to get into the BCS party. Thanks, bro. Good toss by Etlin to D'Angelo Yancey. And now Purdue knocking on the door here inside the five, first and goal. They talked about Etlin yesterday, Coach Shoup. When he had a chance to talk about Etlin, you could just see his face light up. Talked about he's a different kind of guy, and he has shown that. I mean, a couple mistakes in there, but for a young quarterback, he's been pretty impressive and been what they've talked about. I can see now why these guys are so excited about Etling and his future. He's got a touchdown pass here in the second half. Looking for another one on the rollout. Etling fires and scores. Justin Sims. Yeah, how about that arm strength? I mean, stops and throws a dart without even stepping. Just throws a dart for eight yards. So the Boilers respond with a score. Etling is 17 for 34, 224 yards, two touchdowns and an interception in his Purdue debut, 55 to 24. Jordan Lynch and company have other things on their mind. They don't only want to get to a BCS Bowl. They want to win it this time. They were down a touchdown into the fourth quarter before Florida State warm out to win 31 to 10. And it's interesting based on which news account you read, whether they were in the game close heading into the fourth quarter or whether they were completely overmatched. Yeah, I don't believe in moral victories in BCS football games, but only being down seven to Florida State going into the fourth Absolutely. quarter is impressive. Yep. And, and I think that's something that should be recognized. It wasn't like they were out of their league. Now, the score at the end looked much worse than the actual game itself. I mean, they came in there and they competed. They just ended up losing to a better football team. But this Northern, Northern Illinois team has proven that not only they're not a flash in the pan team, they've been good for a number of years now, and they're still good, partly because of Jordan Lynch and what he's been able to do and the way he's competed and his leadership for this football team. Yeah, they talk about finish the fight. Timeout. And, and that, Northern Illinois. That includes getting 30 second charge timeout. to a BCS bowl game and actually winning it this time. There is a look at what's ahead after today. And down there, Ball State and Toledo will be the big challenges. You can see that Toledo matchup on ESPN2 and then Western Michigan on ESPN November 26th. How about four of their first five games on the road? You know, and they're 3-0. and They fought back. We talked about the fact that they fought back. They've been behind in those three games. Two of them on the road. I mean, when you talk about fighting back, usually those things happen at home. They've done it on the road. It, it doesn't matter to them. That's how good they've been so far. Home or away, they find ways to win. It's been a remarkable run. This will be their 11th consecutive road win. They've won 22 in a row at home. They are on the verge of winning for the 25th time in their last 27 games. And were they able to hold on here, the onside kick? Boomer Mays was the first guy to get to it. I was just about to say, that is an impressive play by a linebacker to go up with his hand and snatch his ball out of the air. Now we've got to wait to see if he actually held on to it. Well, the back judge signaled Purdue, but everybody was saying white ball. 
Oh well, he looked good. He looked good going up. For it. It's gonna be Look at that. football. It's off the ground. Ah, uh, there it is close. on the ground. Yeah, it jumps out of his hand. Looks like Ricardo Allen had the recovery. I think it was Cameron Posey who jarred it loose. So Edmonds day is not done. Yeah. Catch is made by Lancey. Nice shake and bake first down. You mentioned Yancey, a freshman, bringing Etling, the freshman quarterback. Dan Monteroso is a freshman receiver who broke the collarbone is on the sideline. I mean, you look at the skill positions for this Purdue team. They're young and they're talented. I mean, they, they could be explosive if they continue to work, but Etling is a great place to start. First to 10, Etling. Another completion to Yancey. Taken down at the 35-yard line. Well, a new head coach and a new system and a lot of new guys getting a chance. Some of their impact freshmen. A couple of guys that have already been in the lineup and knocked out by injuries. Uh, they hope to have Bruce and Monterosa back soon. At least incomplete, broken up at the five-yard line. Is by Dominique Ware. for Carter. You talked about the young guys, a couple of defensive ends in that group. Also, you know, and, and you talked to Coach Hudson, the defensive coordinator, his face lit up when he started talking about his defensive ends. He's like, shoot, talking about Etling. He talked about his young guys coming in, paying former global, and uh, he thinks he has a, a really good set of defensive end, you know, guys coming in that'll really spark this Purdue defense. And complete on that attempt from Etling. And now it's fourth and four. This be a 51 yard field goal, and, and I agree with the stay on the field, get Etling more snaps, put him in more situations, and see if he can throw and take care of him. Need to get to the 30. And Etling is intercepted at the eight yard line. Dominique Ware. Fifth turnover of the day for Purdue. None for Northern Illinois. And two touchdowns today for Etling and now two picks. And we talked earlier, Etling with his eyes. The safeties, the linebackers, they read the quarterback's eyes, and Etling, you can see, is staring down his receiver down the sideline. Safety just makes a really nice break and goes up, high points the ball. Nice interception by Ware, but again, Etling, that's one of those things he'll fix as he gets more snaps under his belt. Guys will read your eyes. And now the third string quarterback is in, Drew Hare, the redshirt freshman out of O'Mallon, Missouri. O'Fallon, Missouri. James Spencer got the carry. Go. They will uh, let the play clock wind down as far as they can. And on second and one, to run up the gut. Forward progress looks like it'll give them the first down yardage. Let's take a look at our hardest working player brought to you by Polaris. And of course, it's Jordan Lynch. Puts in about a half day's work. Only win the first half. That's all he needed to do. Gets the three TDs in the first half. 195 yards passing, delivers it to eight different guys. Takes it easy in the second half, only 12 yards passing, gets a rushing touchdown. But Jordan Lynch was, has been exceptional today. Like I said, only put in a half's worth of work, but it was it was a pretty good half. For a team that had been slow starting through its first three games, they came out and scored on their first five possessions here today. And then really 
able to bring it home with the 99-yard kick return for a touchdown to open up the third quarter. And I think that was that was the nail in the coffin. You know, Purdue gets a field goal. They bring in Etling. They're re-energized re before half. And then you get the kickoff return, and that just ends the game for Purdue. Takes the momentum back away, puts it on NIU side. And then, of course, Jordan Lynch drives his team down and puts one in the end zone afterwards. And the passing TDs, the three of them in the first half, the rushing touchdown in the second half. Spencer getting some time. Now to the 34, clock winding down to two minutes to go. How about some of the non-AQ quarterbacks that are awfully good? Chucky Keaton got a win over David Fales on Friday night. Derek Carr may be the best of the bunch. Older brother David, an NFL guy. Yeah, Derek Carr is a guy that he's fun to watch. If you have a chance to catch Fresno State, Derek Carr is well worth your time to sit down and watch him play. Work in the clock here on the final minute. No, I think they're, for the most part, going to like the way the defense played today as well. They've got six turnovers, or five turnovers, rather, for a unit that had been struggling a bit, giving up yardage, giving up points. We talked about giving up. They were giving up 34 points a game. Only giving up 24 here today. That bring the average down just a tiny bit. <laughs> but they're going to have to play better defense, you know, in these games to come once they get in the conference. And they're facing teams that know what they do or used to seeing them. So you're going to have to play much better in conference. And the final minute of a win that will match this 31-point victory, match the biggest win ever for a Mac school over a Big Ten school and. History being made for the Huskies, the first time a MAC team has beaten two Big Ten teams in the regular season with a win over Iowa and now a win over Purdue, both of them coming on the road. And this one in impressive fashion as they go to 4-0. And, oh, and Purdue will fall to 1-4 and four, heading into Big Ten play. Yeah, pretty impressive by NIU. You said from start to finish, they've been good in all three phases of the game. Well, oh, a timeout called with seven seconds to go. And Jordan Lynch had the three passing touchdowns today, Joey, added the rushing touchdown, the defense scores, an interception return for a touchdown, and also the special teams TD. Everybody able to get involved today for Northern Illinois on this historic day at Purdue. Yeah, Coach Carey has to be pretty happy with what they've done today. They've been behind in their first three games, and they wanted to start faster. Well, they did that here today. Good first half. Jordan Lynch only played one half of football with the three touchdowns. He's been outstanding. And then they come in with a kickoff return just to finish this game off. Much better defense, much better kicking game, very good on offense as usual. So Coach Carey has to be pretty excited. And big changes as well for Purdue. They make the quarterback change today. And the debut of true freshman Danny Etling. The Etling era underway in West Lafayette with a lot of youngsters getting the opportunity to play under first-year head coach Daryl Hazel. 55 to 24, the final score. Northern Illinois gets the win over Purdue. For Joey Galloway, Paul Carcaterra, and our entire crew here in West Lafayette, I'm Beth Mowens. Thanks for being with us. A big day for Jordan Lynch. Now Wendy, Robert, and Todd in the studio. Thank you very much, Beth. Coming up in just a few minutes, Minnesota quarterback Mitch Leiden. 151 rush yards and four rushing touchdowns in his first career start. That came last week with a win over San Jose State. That game coming up at about 335 Eastern and Jameis Winston leading the FBS with 78% completion percentage this season. His Florida State team in the Heights on a beautiful afternoon for football. They will face Boston College. We'll take you up to game time. Robert Smith, Todd McShay. I'm Wendy Nix. We have just a few minutes, but we'll get you caught up to date.